Hello, 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 Barca fans. How are we doing? Good afternoon. We are La Liga champions. Barca won the title last night in the game against Espanyol in the City derby after a fantastic performance, a fantastic first half to seal the deal and win the 27th La Liga title in club history. We're here this afternoon to show you the parade that's going to go citywide with Barca's men's team and Barca's women's team celebrating both of their league titles. This is a parade which will start at the Spotify Camp Nou where you can see there are three buses, one for the men's team, one for the women's team, one for the uh, staff of both teams. And this, of course, is for you guys. It's for the fans to celebrate the title that was much desired, a title that we'd, win we'd been waiting for for four years now. It's 2019. Barca had not been able to win that league title. It's been one that has uh, been much suffered. It's been a struggle. We've uh, had some uh, tight games this season, but the team ultimately got the job done and managed to clinch that title yesterday in the game against Espanyol. And we welcome you to this live show this afternoon. We'll be showing you the entirety of this parade, which will go from west to east in the city of Barcelona. I'm assuming with many, many fans uh, throughout the streets with the teams, the men's teams and the women's team on the uh, top of those uh, buses celebrating these two La Liga titles. Joining me here in the studio to talk about the whole thing this afternoon and reflect on this fantastic season, Irati Vidal and uh, Diego Lorin. Irati, we've been through it all season long on Barca Live, and this feels like something we deserve. We deserved a little bit of celebration. Yeah, walking around the city today in Barcelona, you saw all those Barca shirts, all those smiles on the faces of Barca fans, and I think we deserve this, and especially uh, this parade with also the women's team, which we are so proud about, and uh, hopefully they bring the second Champions League to the city. I think that is how you show your Mescon Club. And Diego, Barca have won this league with four games to spare. Obviously, it's been a season of ups and downs, uh, but let's focus on, on, on the ups and what it is, what it means to win this La Liga title. So important, right, Robert? I mean, uh, for so many reasons, uh, for it being Xavi's first, for being the first uh, one for so many of the youngsters of the team as well. Um, I was watching our colleague uh, Chus report yesterday and having an interview with Frankie de Jong and him saying, this is my, you know, I'm so happy to finally win my first trophy. And Frankie, who feels like a, a team veteran, a league trophy that is, uh, winning his first and the first as well since, of course, the departure of Leo Messi. So it's, it's the first of many more good things to come, I would hope. And we'll also have Bruno Balleste reporting from, uh, from the uh, parade itself, right? Uh, he's going to be walking by the buses. Uh, I was we'll going to say, no bus in. for Bruno. <laughs> exactly, no, we'll go, <laughs> we'll go to him in a little second. Before this parade gets going, I do want to go back to the month of August, that Juan Gamper presentation, where our head coach, Xavi, had this to say. Comencem un any molt il·lusionant. Jo soc el primer que tinc molta il·lusió, moltíssima. I res m'agradaria més que fer feliços a tots els culers. I això passa per guanyar títols aquesta temporada. Aquest és l'objectiu principal. Well, guys, it was the prime objective. Mission accomplished. It was yeah. an ambitious objective, mm -hmm. taking into account where we were coming from. And as you said, Diego, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished with flying colors, I would say. I mean, it's uh, rare that we managed to win a, wee a league with so many not just games to spare, but with so many points ahead of uh, uh, second and third place teams as well. It's uh, really, I mean, Xavi said it all season that the, the objective was to get La Liga. It started with the Super Cup as well. Of course, that was already a good sign that things were going in the right direction, not just 
for winning it, but the way that we won it as well. Okay, things didn't work out on the European stage, but hey, getting the, the La Liga trophy already in his very first season, his first full season. I like to say it's Xavi's first season and, and not really count the half season that he had uh, uh, the season prior. So it's it's for me, it's it's a test passed with flying colors. Right, let's go to the Spotify camp. No, Bruno Ballester right there before this parade starts. Bruno. Hello guys, well yes, this is about to start, first movement now of the bus, we are here now at the Spotify Camp Nou, the men's team up there uh, in this first bus, of course also we have the women's team on the second bus, down there, both teams celebrating the league trophies, all the police officers, uh, all the cleaning services, also there's going to be a first bus with the music, and all we don't really right now we hope that are going to be full of people cloudy day in Barcelona it's not raining right now let's see if this weather continues like this and this uh, is going to here at the camp now is going to be at the Arc de Triomphe in the city centre of Barcelona so really excited all of us to see uh, how things go well, we're having some uh, connectivity issues there with uh, Bruno. We'll see if we can get a uh, better connection going. I hope that Bruno's wearing comfortable <laughs> shoes. This is, a, this is a long walk for him today. It is. It's almost an hour, I could say, because, uh, I mean, it ends up in Arte Triomphe. It's close where I live, and that's... Have you ever path, walked from yeah. your place to the camp? I've walked yeah. and it's around one hour. Okay. <laughs> so. It is. I mean, and, and, and you're going at bus pace here yeah. with all the fans that'll be on the streets as I well. The players it. wanting to yeah. enjoy it. The bus stops, starts, goes, starts, goes. So we, we're assuming this is going to be between three and four hours. We're going to be here for the next three or four hours showing you the whole parade, this whole celebration. I want to ask the fans that are watching us on YouTube, on Facebook uh, to grade this La Liga season. Not the whole season in all competitions. We're focusing on La Liga today. This is what we're celebrating as the players we see are going to share some uh, <laughs> some pizza. Well deserved. They, they they take care of their diets usually. I say today, if there's any day that they can of skip course. their diet, today is the day. <laughs> Absolutely. But I want to ask on the live chat, grade this La Liga season, only La Liga, from 1 to 10. What would the grade be? Diego, Iraqi. La Liga? I mean... It's, I think uh, 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 if, if, if we're not giving a 10, at least a 9. I, I would give it a 9 out of 10, a solid 9 for me. Yeah, I think 10 out of 10 would have been like maybe not suffering in some mm. La Liga matches with uh, more goals more in goals. those 1-0 up wins. Uh, but I give it a 9 because many things have changed since last season. We were talking yesterday here, the mental aspect, the defense, also how, how the team has grown through all La Liga. They have faced it, like many injuries alongside the season. So I think I will bring that 9 out of 10. And the fans agree on the live chat. Uh, Devanj says uh, 9. Shivanj Vajal says 8. Jaime Cisneros 10. Adnan says 10. Sidant Shinde says 10. Sidart says 8.5 out of 10. There's tens, nines. I'd, I'd go for uh, for a nine as well. There's, there, there is that point in which it, it, it's impressive that we've got these 11 one nil wins, but you would have wanted more comfortable wins. I think Xavi would agree there that you would have wanted uh, more comfortable wins in some occasions, being able to finish off the games a little bit earlier and not having to suffer until the end. But we're not here to rain on the parade. It might rain during the parade, <laughs> but uh, it has been an impressive uh, season overall, as it has been, Irati Vidal, for the women's team, still unbeaten. Yes, yeah, still unbeaten. We saw how the other day they broke a record, a worldwide <laughs> record with 62 victories in a row in, in the league. It is amazing. We hope this uh, amazing season again ends with another Champions League in Eindhoven. I think they also deserve the joy today around the city to feel all the love of the fans. I think, and I'm listening this morning uh, in the National Catalan TV, John Laporta saying that it was the, the women's team like just subjecting all the fans and all, all, all the pride of Barca fans during these bad years from the men's team. Absolutely. And I think they also deserve this parade around Barcelona. Most definitely. They absolutely uh, deserve it. A team which the other day draws one all 
against Sevilla, and you think, say, oh, well, what a disaster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, it was going to be the, the news, right? Yeah. At yeah. one point, was that win streak going to come to an end after 62 games? No, knowing how perfectionist they are, Irati, how much do you think that that would have bothered them, the fact that that I streak... Think, I think it bothered because that uh, draw, it was like with mainly all uh, players from the second team, which they also mm. won the league, the second yeah. league. It was amazing. And uh, the following match, uh, Jonathan Giraldes already put the starting 11. <laughs> like, let's win again and <laughs> let's start the, that record again. So I think that uh, also talks about the Balsa culture and they always want the perfection and they always want to, to grow. Well, we're waiting for this parade to start at the Spotify Cup. Now a view there of the uh, roof uh, of the bus of the men's team with players, some of them wearing uh, sunglasses, some <laughs> others. I, I assume it must have been a long night for them, a well-deserved <laughs> yeah. long night for them after a tough, tough season. And and I think Always. that beat is perfect for hangover. <laughs> yeah, but that's hangover food, right? Always like seeing these images. I don't want of to assume. Players. I don't want to assume. <laughs> that well, Maybe they want to sleep early. If I win early. a I league, know. I would love to have hangover the following day. <laughs> of course, much different scenarios for the men's team and the women's team. They still yeah. have Irati, as you mentioned, the Champions League final to focus on. Yeah, there's still one match to play for for the league, which they already won almost everything, and uh, that final to focus to recover all the players and to go there to end up and beat uh, again Wolfsburg and bring the second Champions League of the team, which would be amazing. And if there was any doubt whether the fan base was engaged with this team, with this club at this particular moment in time, well, there you go. You see the footage of last night in Canaletas. You see what the players are going to see right now when they exit the Spotify Camp Nou. The fans are out in numbers in Barcelona. Yeah, I mean, the fans, we've all been waiting for this moment. It's been four long years, and to see the success of this team and what we hope is, you know, the start of more beautiful things to come, of course, in this project led by Xavi Hernández, uh, such a, a young coach himself, and this second spell of, of presidency of, of Juan Laporta as well, the first league trophy for him. And, uh, you know, we, we touched upon the fact that this squad is filled with so many young talents that uh, have been have committed to the club long term as well. So, again, I hope that this is the start of, of many more beautiful trophies and endings of, of seasons in, in this kind of way where the fans are, are you know we were hungry we were desperate for this uh, for for of course sharing this moment and celebrating it all together and i think we were talking it yesterday like one of the main things that this team has achieved is that boundary with the, with the fans because we were seeing last two years that come no like was not fully north and everything yeah. and this season we have seen spotify come no fully in all the matches it, 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 regardless the, the weather the time the day of the uh, of the week it was always full and that's something that this team has accomplished some Absolutely. great attendances this season at the spotify camp now as we can see the buses get going the president Juan Laporta. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for them at the bottom I assume uh, President Laporta will be following the uh, parade there's our colleague Carla Garcia at the bottom who's gonna follow the, uh, yes, the feminine bus, the women's that. bus uh, some mm -hmm. iconic uh, images as well from the locker room last night of the president celebrating there was the indeed players. he does like a good celebration <laughs> doesn't he, our president? <laughs> anyway the buses get going uh, the men's team bus is gonna lead the way there Exiting Spotify coming. I was talking about the engagement with the fans, and this one's a nice one as well for the young ones. I know, Diego, you have kids. This is one of the days in which the kids want to wear their Barca jerseys to school. It is, it is, absolutely. You said it right, uh, Robert. I mean, this morning my son woke up, it's the first thing he literally wanted to wear his Barca shirt to school. We had to tell him that he's not allowed, even though it is a, a big day <laughs> of celebration for all Barca fans. Uh, you got to follow the strict uh, rules of the school and the uniforms and stuff. But yeah, I mean, this is... You know, I say it, rules, rules should go out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, rules yeah, are there, yeah, made I mean. to be broken, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's he's just turned eight years old, so this is the first big trophy that he remembers Barca winning. And uh, yeah, he wanted to flaunt his colors, of course, uh, by any means. And it's... Um, I mean, I, I, I was going to ask you guys, actually, where do you rank this league trophy of all the ones that uh, we've managed to experience, that you've lived through for the younger years and all the ones? I mean, the, the importance of it, not, not so much the, the matter in, what, in, in which it was won, but the importance of this league trophy, I think, can, cannot be understated. I, I was talking yesterday about, I was talking about the young players mm. on this team, how 
sometimes it's important to experience defeat so yep. that later on victory tastes sweeter. Awesome, yeah. And there was a point for us, like for me in my 20s, in which it was just the normal thing that Barca won the league. I go back to when I was just about to go to university. 2005, we win the first Reichardt League. 2006, following year, we win the league. Then the three Pep ones. Then you've got the Tito Villanova one. Then you've got the two Lucho ones. Then you've got the two Valverde ones. And, and all of a sudden, Barca have won eight out of 11 league 11. titles. Yeah. And it reaches a point in which you're happy uh, and you're ecstatic about your team winning, but it's the norm, isn't yeah, it? And, exactly. uh, and it's almost something that it doesn't lose value, but you lose perspective this. of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You, and now, after four seasons of drought and barely winning any titles, because we did have that Copa del Rey, we won the Super Cup earlier on in the season, now this one acquires a lot more value because we've got such a young core who are winning the league title for the first time because of where we're coming from. Uh, because of everything that has been said in the, in, in the media yeah. and everything. So 100%. for me, this one is one of the valuable ones. Yeah, Definitely. yeah because I couldn't it, agree it, more. it's clerical, like it's it's a bounce back. It's Barca coming back for where they belong. You were talking about all these uh, uh, victories and everything, and I'm even younger. and. I've never seen Barca losing with, uh, leagues. Like for me, the normal. I grew up with uh, Rijas Barca, and then it came to Guardiola's, and then it came to Luis Enrique and Valverde and everything. And these four years were the first four years where I was not celebrating a Barca title, and it felt so weird. I was talking the other day with my friends, and we were, we are not used to that. So I think uh, that's the historical part of this league. Right, uh, the buses are moving, and so is Bruno Ballester. Yes, we are here in the access number 14 right now. Yes, the bus is leaving from the Spotify Camp now. And you can see the crowd, all the people that is supporting the team here just at this access of the Spotify Camp now. It's absolutely crazy. Also here on the bridge uh, at the Spotify Camp now. Uh, well, this now, yes, is about to, to start. The expectations are really, really high. The people here on the streets, we can feel it that they want to celebrate this league title and now uh, they are turning to the left they're gonna start in Travasera de las Cors in this uh, famous street where the Spotify Camp Nou is located so uh, guys you can see the image you can see how people are absolutely crazy with this team and right now the bus is starting this uh, parade that will end at the city center of Barcelona. Bruno I hope you're wearing comfortable shoes it's a long walk for you today. Yes, yes, comfortable shoes for sure because we have around eight kilometers more or less from the Camp Nou uh, to the city center to Arda Triomphe, of course. Um, well, we're going to go walking, the buses are going to go in a slow rhythm so all the fans can enjoy, can uh, yeah, be with uh, the players. They are also giving uh, shirts, uh, gifts, and they are enjoying uh, a lot. There you can see uh, all the people absolutely crazy. Now, uh, everyone cheering to Sergio Busquets, Busi, Busi, that of course is going to be one of the main protagonists. It's going to be his last parade, his last trophy for FC Barcelona this league. So, uh, well, absolutely crazy. All the people, all the fans in here uh, supporting the team. It's uh, really beautiful to see uh, the streets full, full of people. It's incredible, this image. Thank you very much, Bruno. I want to count of which are the most popular chants, by the way. Uh, I'll come back to you later. With that, we're seeing footage of Alexia Putellas, Jana Fernandez on the uh, women's bus, and also our cameraman Ernest Mendez and uh, Jordi <laughs> Sanglas. They're on the bus as well, and we'll be seeing some exclusive footage later on that they'll be recording. Just look at the fans out there waiting for the teams to exit the Spotify Cup now. And you, Bruno was saying eight kilometers. You think easily done. This is going to take about an hour and a half or something. Mm. No, no. I mean. <laughs> They haven't even exited the stadium and we've already uh we're already 22 minutes in here yeah exactly and with those shoes i hope he has an umbrella emergency umbrella true. as well it's been true because uh we've been waiting for rain here in uh, catalonia for for months now yeah. and, uh, and it came here uh, yeah, <laughs> now. It now that the, the bus fans are supposed to be out in the street celebrating they are regardless i can see some gabby jerseys there people out with their flags with their scarves the fans were waiting for this as you can see that is the men's team's bus exiting the Spotify Cup now initiating this parade that's going to go citywide as Bruno said eight kilometers going from west 
to ease from the Spotify Camp Nou to the Arc of Triumph. This will not be the only celebration. There's going to be uh, celebrations after the game against Real Sociedad next Saturday at the Spotify Camp Nou, where the fa players will be able to address the fans, typical speeches, a bit more celebration. I kind, I kind of like it that we, we're dividing up the celebrations here. Yeah, I think it, I, I think it's the most important season to celebrate. And if you can celebrate three times, why would you celebrate only one? So I think it's really important. We hope we can celebrate there. And then we hope we can celebrate also again in the Johan Cruyff Stadium with the women's team. Absolutely. You know what I wouldn't want to be doing today? Working security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that looks like a stressful job there. But anyway... Starting with last night already. Yeah, starting exactly. with last night, yeah. We won't go there, but uh, there is the uh, bus exiting the Spotify Cup. No, the women's team bus following as well. Two fantastic seasons that both teams have had. Guys, um, in five years' time, when you think back to this La Liga, you know, typical conversation that we have downstairs in, in, in the boardroom and everything. Think ah the uh, the first Chavi League. What will come to mind first? For me, it will come like the the change of mentality, the the back to back in terms of style, but also names like Alejandro Valde, or mm. the, one of the best seasons of, of, of Gabi. That the back defense, Mark Andre Ter Stegen. I, I think it, we will look back to this, and we will look back to the beginning of something new because. Of course, like Gerard Piquet retired this season, the, uh, Sergio Busquets is, is ending his career this season also at the Barca. Uh, we are not going to see many more seasons of Jordi Alba either, but it's the start of so many young players and talented players. And what I was talking uh, today with my dad was like the most important of this thing. It's like yesterday you were listening the interviews of those players with, with Chus Carrillo and, uh, and we were listening here in uh, Barca's YouTube. And they love Barca, they are Barca fans. And I think mm. it's the most important. And I think it's how they have accomplished this being that young because they are hunger and because they also love the Barca colors. Well, you talk about players being uh, fans. I'm just, I'm just going here to what Pedri posted yesterday. Just bring it up here very quickly. Pedri says, the first league with the club of my life. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't even born here. Right, 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 right. Yeah. He was born kilometers away on Kilo an island. On an island. And the same with Gabi, yeah. right? Gabi, when he talked about the club of my life and winning the, the first league with the club of his life. And uh, yeah, I, I think that, I mean, echoing and bouncing off of what you just said, um, it's 100% true in that sense for these young players. I couldn't imagine a better coach neither to nurture, you know, uh, not just their footballing skills, but their love for the club uh, in a better way than somebody like Xavi Hernandez. But um, uh, for, for me, though, the, the moment that I think sticks out the most is, is funny enough, maybe the, the Super Cup against Madrid. Um, not just for beating Madrid and the way we did in the Super Cup, but for maybe that first game the, the, the Super Cup where we lost against Madrid, where we showed already so many signs of, you know, the brilliant football that this team can play under the mandate of Xavi Hernandez, th losing that final against Madrid and then bouncing back and being able to beat them uh, on after, uh, you know, a second go. I think that was symbolically a massively important title for this team to, uh, to achieve and uh, sort of maybe trampoline them uh, forward into the league and, and, and eventually ending up uh, the league title. So uh, I think, for if yeah, you're looking for specific moments throughout the league campaign. That for me was, was, was definitely a standout moment. As the buses keep moving. I agree, guys. Uh, it's, the, it's the league in which Xavi gets to work for the first time yeah. it, for a full season. It's the league in which the club makes a risky bet as well at the beginning of the season because the situation was what it was in yeah. terms of the economy. Yeah. Uh, the famous levers that we talked about so much last uh, summer. But they made a conscious effort to bring in talent, to bring mm. in experienced players like Robert Lewandowski, uh, bet for the future in Jules Koundé, yeah. uh, some free signings who've made an impact as well, Andres Christensen, Frank Kessier, you've got Marcos Alonso coming in, also another, uh, another veteran who joined uh, the squad. You've got the bet on Rafinha, who's delivered in key moments this season Absolutely. as well. He's he scored important goals and, and provided uh, assists as well. And just the change of mentality as well. I you think, think going amazing. back just to last May, last May, how we ended the season. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, it was, it was 
let's get into Europe. Mm. And maybe next season things will work out. Well, look, things have worked out. I think mentality is the main change that ha Xavi has introduced to this uh, team because we were saying uh, that last year there was a situation with the one nil up that you knew that uh, the team was going to lose that game and you knew it was going to happen because you saw how mentally they are and the, the main change that Xavi has introduced is that those one nil ups the, the team was strong enough mentally to, to just uh, uh, achieve the, the three points and, uh, and continue fighting. And the women's team of course there. Also enjoying this moment, letting it sink in. There was another season in which there was a joint parade as well. It was the 12-13 season. This is quite a while back. Well, 10 years ago, in fact, yeah. the uh, Tito Villanova. And it's the third league. time in the history that both uh, men and women win the league at the same time. Well, there you go. Just a rare occasion. I remember when I was young as well, there was also a joint parade with the, um, with the rest of the professional teams. They all mm -hmm. won the league. It was a league, mm -hmm. uh, a year in which Football, basketball, handball and roller hockey all won the league, the 97-98 season, and they had a joint parade with all four teams. And that felt special as well in this multi-sport uh, club. There is Xavi Hernandez enjoying the moment. He's done this several times as a player. <laughs> I think this one must feel very special for him as well. Taking into account the challenge he took on in uh, November 2021, difficult situation he was put, on, uh, put in, but he was brave. The club trusted him. And now the results start to show. Mm, mm, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, and, and Xavi came it, sacrificing many things as well. I mean, uh, he had a very comfortable setup over in Qatar, and he, in the end, came under very tumultuous circumstances. Uh, you touched upon some of them, Robert. But for him, it was, you know, a, a massive step to take and a risky one. Many people said before Xavi uh, came here that he needed European experience as a manager, of course, not as a player, uh, but to have some get some experience and notches on the belt in terms of how the competition is played, how the game is played uh, from a managerial perspective within Europe. And of course, I mean, he's a very young manager that uh, the only experience he had prior to this was what um, the, the over in Doha. But uh, so it, it was a risky move for him, for a young manager to take over uh, such a massive club under difficult circumstances with so much at stake. I mean, had things gone wrong, uh, what you know? Uh, what, what kind of then? Then where where would Chabi go from there? Is the question I'm trying to ask. And you know, I think it shows great faith uh, in his abilities, but also believe in himself. That when he came, he said, "No, no, I am the right person for this job. Trust me, and, and trust me with this role, because um, I'm able to turn this situation around." And eventually, you know, he did do that. And, and we saw early signs of it last season. And I think this season is sort of the, the culmination of, of all that hard work, those hours that he put in on the field, off the field. We know that he is very personable with players as well, likes to engage in, in personal conversation. And I think that that is, is so important, so important. But Robert, just to go back to what you're saying, I think they could have done something similar this season with the Barca sections because you're not mistaken, yeah. they're both with yeah, the yeah, no, no, all of one as well, football. basketball, we're still waiting because uh -huh. they, they don't play their playoff uh, final until the end of, uh, in, the end of June. Well, we're, we're doing well, the f yeah. football Salah also, uh, yeah. still uh, waiting, and, and also hockey. So, yeah, the, the handball team is the only one who's already secured yeah. the uh, title, but it's going to be another, uh, another season with many, many trophies many. Uh, for us in terms of all of our professional teams. Right, the fines are out in numbers in the streets as the uh, buses progress down Travasera de las Cortes. That's the south entrance of the Spotify Camp Now. If you've been there, you'll recognize where the uh, bus is moving down. As I say, there are numbers in the streets. There are numbers in terms of viewing us as well. 50K on YouTube, 11K on uh, Facebook. We thank you for being here with us. We want to know where you're watching us from. Let us know on the uh, live chat. I'm sure fans from all around the world want to watch this parade that we're offering to you live here on Barca's social media channels on Barca TV Plus 2. Let us know where you're watching us from, where you're supporting Barca from. This one, guys, is for you as well. The loyal Pules, the loyal Barca fans who I feel, well, did really, you? really wanted to celebrate. There's Absolutely. love from India. India. I was going to say, did you see <laughs> the images from, from the Barca Peña from Mumbai? I have not seen those, oh, no. They were going crazy. They were going absolutely nuts. Shout out to the Barca Peña Mumbai, for sure. Well, Misal Kumar says they're from India. John Chisos is from Zambia. Kylie says from uh, Germany. 
Uh, Amir Imats is from New Jersey. Varun Jarai says uh, India as well. Bosnia, Germany. Ge India and Germany dominating here. Uh, where else? Where else? Dennis from Belgium. Stuki from Finland. Or Siri Cisneros from Florida. I mean, I can't read them all. I see Denmark, I see Armenia, Ukraine, Bangladesh, Germany, Poland, of course, with their idol here, Robert Lewandowski. We'll talk about him in a little while. I've got Azerbaijan, San Francisco, Canada, Malaysia, Israel, Manchester, Bern, New York, Nigeria. This is crazy, guys. We've got support from all around the world watching this live parade here live on Barca's social media channels. We were talking about Xavi's impact on this season. I want to ask the fans there, switching the question uh, from where are you watching this from, but what's been the thing in which Xavi's made the most impact on these teams? I'm going to give you some items. And you let us know on the live chat as well. And Diego Irati, I ask you, it's what he said at the beginning, at the beginning when he arrived. The insistence on how, on the how. Rather than the results, the how. Mm -hmm. Is it installing the competitive spirit in this team? I remember when we lost in Munich last season, he said the thing that he was most disappointed with is that he didn't see a competitive spirit in the team. This is, I'm, I'm talking about the 21-22 season yeah. here yeah. when he just arrived. Mm -hmm. And now he's turned this into a competitive rock. Uh, the solidity that this team has shown, just conceding 13 goals in this La Liga, 25 clean sheets. Is it linked to the how, how he's moved the lineup around until he found that midfield, four midfielders formula? What is it for you guys? <laughs> it's hard is to it? choose between all of those because I think... All of the above? The, is that enough? All of the above is enough? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think all those little changes have uh, created a, a big project that uh, is not going to end or stop here because I'm probably sure that Tab is already thinking, OK, next season we go for Europe. Because now we, we, we have proved we can win uh, La Liga and uh, next uh, season we are proof ourselves that we can also uh, be competitive in uh, Europe. I said it before, I think uh, the main change that Xavi has introduced to this team is the mentality of the team, you know, because that comes with everything. When you are more competitive, when uh, your mentality is more strong, then you can defend better, you have more solidarity with, with your teams. And also what we saw yesterday after the team, the way he treats the team mentally also created a family in the locker room. And that's super important because in the end they spend many hours together and in the bad moments is when you need that solidarity from uh, your teammates for, for me. The big change that Xavi has introduced is the mentality, uh, the spirit of the team, but as you said before, like the style, because it felt like the team was kind of losing that Johan Cruyff, that uh, DNI of Barca style. And with Xavi, we started to see that style again. I'm seeing on the live chat people saying the mentality, the competitive spirit. I'm seeing the word mature, which seems like, uh, <laughs> ironic, taking into account that we've got 19-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> But this team has shown maturity throughout the season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. I mean, uh, in moments in particular where we compared this season to last season, Irati touched on it before, games that we were winning 1-0 by fine margins, uh, you kind of had an inclination or this feeling that, oh, I don't know if the game is going to end up with us still leading on the scoreboard. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't. This season, that has certainly changed. But it, I think that's why I would, maybe out of all the options, would... Uh, highlight or, or yeah, destaco highlight the uh, the defensive solidity as well. I mean, it's something quite striking that we are seeing this Barca team breaking records that have stood for years. I mean, you compare this team to you know Cholo Simeone's Atletico from the the, the what was it the 13 14 uh, 14 15 season that were you know uh, defensively so sound and, and and winning by narrow margins yes but but particularly highlighted for their clean sheets or you know the the Chelsea from uh, with Peter Cech in goal, and we're seeing that this Barca is currently wiping the floor with them. I mean, they are setting new records defensively, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Phil Jackson in one of his books quoted that, uh, uh, the basketball coach Phil Jackson, of course, that, you know, championship teams are actually built from the back uh, upwards, and I think maybe that is what we're seeing as well with Xavi Hernandez at the helm. Is that you know he maybe placed uh, uh, more emphasis than what we thought or expected from from a Barça team that is known for its flair, its offensive abilities, to say, hey, let's fix the back 
and make sure that uh, uh, we have as, as solid of a defense as possible and, you know, uh, go from there. And I think, it's, I mean, it's, it's undeniable that that has been a, a massive success. Fantastic footage that we're seeing. The Bengalas. Bengalas, the blue and red smoke on top of the, uh, the men's bus, the women's bus. I was seeing the smile there just a minute ago of Aitana Bonmati. Have you ever, she, she's normally very serious <laughs> yeah, in her demeanor. True. Have you ever seen her smile so purely? <laughs> we were talking before about competitive and I think it's the most competitive player that Bart has uh, maybe all, all on the club alongside with uh, uh, Gabi. And yeah, I think it's the first time I see her like smiling that, like that. But let's just listen to the atmosphere there. I think the players were initiating a chant with the fans. <laughs> we missed it, guys. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to it. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing Ronald Araujo there with the Uruguayan flag, the shades, Robert Lewandowski behind Sergio Busquets. Uh, obviously, a special one for him. This one taking into account that he announced last week yeah. that this is going to be his last uh, season with Football Club Barcelona as a player. Yeah. Let's say, see you soon. Yeah, yeah. he said that. Hasta luego, no nadie se vea. Who do you think is the, the, the play that parties the hardest? In, in previous teams, it was quite easy to pick out the... Yeah, I, I, <laughs> look, um, okay, let's just reword the question because well, I don't want to assume that throughout the season they no, go no, out. No. Who, who, who do you think had the best time last night? Right, well I, said. I think from what we saw yesterday, Jordi Alba was leading everything there. Jordi, Jordi Alba, Alba is, a, is a chant initiator. Yeah. You see it always in the dressing room. When they're happy, when yeah. they've had a big win, he's the one starting the Bas Rantha, yeah. the Un Dia de Partit chant. He's an initiator there. I'm going to say... And going for the sunglasses hangover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We can yeah. just start guessing there. I'm going to say I have no information on this. It's just pure speculation uh, that probably in the top three of players who had the best time last night I'm gonna go Gabby and is, is yeah, one of them because yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do things like he always goes full throttle with everything <laughs> he does in life I think I'm gonna go Rafinha yeah Brazilians like to have a nice time and third Araujo? It's got to be Araujo for me yeah yeah I think Araujo I think yeah, it's that big there, personality yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, there was that interview you were referencing uh, last night. Our colleague Churis Carrillo from uh, Barca TV did a fantastic job once the players arrived at Ciudad Esportiva, showing us all the footage with, the, with his cameraman, Ernest Mendez, as well, of, of how they were um, arriving, celebrating with the fans, just putting the microphone in front of them, and all of a sudden, Ronald Araujo takes the microphone and interview, <laughs> interviews Gabi. Yeah. It's fantastic content. You can find it on uh, Barca's social media. He's learning Catalan also. Yeah, we saw it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dana Fernandez, yeah. Alexia Who Putellas. you think is the one parting uh, most in the women's team? Well, they're focused. They're focused on yeah, the Champions yeah. League final. This is just <laughs> a, a little pa parenthesis <laughs> for, for them. They'll have the big party when they yeah. deliver the uh, Champions League final, which we hope will happen in a couple of weeks' time in uh, Eindhoven. And I, don't, I don't think they're allowed to party at the moment. This is just a well, brief today, moment, a brief uh, moment of celebration. Allowed. Oh, yeah. Today, today they they'll, they'll, they'll yeah. definitely enjoy it and, and, and share this moment with the fans. It's just some sightseeing, right? Uh, <laughs> That's also something super important from Barca because Barca has changed the world of women's football in the perspective yeah. of the, that boundary that we were talking with the fans. It's the most followed uh, team in the world right now. We're talking about women's sports and also it was checking the other day some stats. And if you check how uh, support all the teams get in social media, in La Liga, in, I'm talking about men's football, like Barca's women's football in this, is in the second position just right after uh, Barca and Real Madrid. So I think it's amazing, and that's also the, the, something that the club has has changed the, socially. The, 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 yeah, exactly. Uh, the club has made a conscious effort. The team has delivered, yeah. and that helps as well. It's provided the result, has won the titles, is engaged with the fans. You see it in the attendances in the important Champions League matches just the other day against uh, Chelsea. It wasn't a full house, but it's 72,000. I mean, it how, how many 72,000 <laughs> attendances do you see in football period? Yeah, I, it's a full house in almost all the cities in La Liga, 72,000. We, we have like yeah. the, the, world, the first three records of yeah. the yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's, it's incredible. And, and what the women's team have accomplished and are accomplishing is 
it did, unique. Uh, indeed, when Xavi arrives, I remember one of the first quotes he said is like, mm. our guide yeah. is the women's it's team, true. how they play, how they have well, this so, boundary yeah. with the fans and everything. They are our example and they are following now and we see the result. Mm. I'm going to add a fourth player to my uh, top uh, top you three. It's so? going to be a top four now. I know you the best are. Uh, best you are yeah. I'm going I'm to add Arnaud Dennis to that. Yeah. Arnaud Dennis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. at heart. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't played a single minute this season with the first team. He's only played with Barca B. He's been called up in the squad in every La Liga game, bar one, barring one. But still, he feels like an integral part of this team. You see him on the bench sometimes when they show you little shots of the bench and he's always talking to people, he's always hugging people. He, he feels the, 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 the victories as if they're his as well. So it's great to have personalities like that on the team that don't get down because they don't get the, the opportunities. I mean, it's, it's, it's very tough for goalkeepers, isn't it? Especially if you've got a, someone like Tostegin who's conceding 13 goals in 34 games, keeping 25 clean sheets. Yeah. You know that it's going to be tough for you to get a chance to play, but still remaining engaged and just waiting for the opportunity if it arrives. Mm -hmm. I think the most important is what we said before. It's, it's a person that loves Barca. Like he's Barca since he, since he was a child and that's the difference. And, and also we were listening yesterday here, Jordi Alba saying that the, the most important thing that this uh, team has accomplished is that they are a family. And even though those ones who are on the bench are celebrating with the ones that are playing and then when we, they enter, or when they train and everything, they give full heart and that, that's the key of everything. If I'm not mistaken, it was, I mean, he, he, it was him getting entangled with Carvajal in the last Clásicos. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, true, it's true, true. Again, ride or die Barca, man. He, he, lives and, and breathes Barca and it's definitely good to have players like that in the locker room and on your side. An aerial shot there of the city of Barcelona as the buses make progress towards the uh, city centre. Still closer to Camp Nou than they are yeah. to their destination. This is going to be, as I said before, approximately three to four hours this uh, parade. You've got Frank Kessier wearing the special celebration uh, hat there, looking very dapper. Rafinha there as well with his Brazilian say, flag, running out of Le Levy is looking tired. He's, he's <laughs> well, I mean, you know, <laughs> you play the full 90 minutes, you score two score goals. Uh, That's so cool. Can they take him those pictures that you know, that you get in the moment and giving away to everyone? Oh, really? With yeah. the Polaroids? Yeah, he's ah. taking with the Polaroid there. Oh, wow, yeah. fantastic. Now Good we don't day. see it, but... <laughs> Another of the players who's made a uh, huge impact. We'll talk about the impact of these uh, signings later on. Yeah. And the players just sharing these moments with the fans. Arnaud Tenas, Sergi Roberto, Marcos Alonso as well. First one for him in a uh, Barca jersey. Frankie de Jong, for example, who joined in 2019, coming in as the as the young promise from, from Ajax and had to go through, through some rough moments. Uh, mm. I, I didn't play much at the beginning of the season. That was speculation. We won't get into it, of course, because we don't do that here. But uh, <laughs> it was a situation and look, he earned his spot and has ended up being a pivotal part of this team. And finally, he gets to taste the glory of winning a title with Butter, an important title like La Liga. And you saw it yesterday with the celebration. I think he was hugging with Gabi, I think yeah. it was. Uh, and that smile and that uh, celebration meant it all because, I mean, he came here for this, you know, and uh, he was uh, an important uh, player there in Ajax. And then he came here and everyone started comparing him with Johan Cruyff, which is also not easy. And I think this season we have seen the best Frankie de Jong after a hard summer for, for him. And uh, finally he gets the prize of winning La Liga because he came here for this. And also a Barca fan from a distance. I mean, we know that as a kid, he was supporting Barca, following Barca, made a sacrifice himself for coming to the club as well um, by rejecting other offers. We presume more lucrative offers as well, but uh, and and achieving greatness uh, with the club as well that that he holds ever so dear. We know, of course, the the link between Ajax and Barca as well. Uh, can we call them, you know, brotherly clubs, if you will? There's, oh, yeah. there's a clear link between uh, these two entities. So, so I would imagine I'm that Frankie is living this right one now. as well. I'm worrying about that phone right now. I mean, 
But that, that explains everything. Like, uh, Xavi's doing a FaceTime with the wife and the kids, and then the kids ask for Ronald Araujo. Like, that explains also the boundaries the coach has with all the players. Xavi, Sergio Alegre, waving to the fans in the streets of Barcelona. I'm seeing a couple of comments here. One says, uh, one is from Ruben van Eyck, says, is there also a celebration on Saturday, the 21st of May, against Real Sociedad? I can't confirm 100%, but I'm assuming there will be something after that game. As I said before, speeches uh, from uh, the players to the fans and um, typical fireworks yeah. at the uh, Spotify camp. No. Uh, so the I'm, last Rua, sorry, Robert, to, to interrupt, but, but started in... Arc de Triomphe and ended in the Camp Nou, if I'm not exactly. mistaken, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, the yeah, other yeah, way yeah, around. Yeah. Mm. This time we're just, oh, we're spreading out the moments of celebration. I, don't, <laughs> I feel like that's a uh, oh, good thing to do. Just don't concentrate it all in one day. There's Usman uh, Dembele. We haven't seen much of him yet. There was another comment saying, where's Gavi? And he's there, he's there. Next to Dembele. Oh, next to Dembele, right, yeah, right, right. We haven't, we haven't seen Gavi much. We haven't seen Gavi. We want to see more of Gavi in this uh, <laughs> celebration. Because I saw him yesterday in videos of the uh, of the locker room. There's a moment in which the, the staff are all hugging together and singing yeah. and chanting. And all of a sudden, in comes a bouncing Gavi <laughs> and just joins them as well. <laughs> Look at him, he's throwing a, uh, a flag, flag at the fans. <laughs> a, a, a season definitely of growth for, for this youngster who came into the first team when everyone was injured essentially last season Ronald Koeman uh, brought him in gave him his first uh, minute he earned them and he never looked back exactly exactly in that sense there's so many names that you could attribute I mean so many standout names protagonists if you will uh, that you could you know attach to this this the success of the season with this team I'm wondering you know whether it be the Pichichi, the, the league top goal scorer, at least for the moment still, Robert Lewandowski, or are we looking, focusing in the back and Mark andre Ter Stegen in uh, the three sticks with the, all of the clean sheets and the records that he's breaking? Is it Ronald Araujo uh, for his formidable leadership and also defensive abilities and really becoming a, a, a pivotal figure and key part of, of Xavi's system? Or are we looking in the midfield? Is somebody like Gavi who, despite, you know, getting his minutes already early on with, with Ronald Koeman, I think we can all agree that this one truly is his, his breakout season. One of the common denominators now that I'm looking at the, uh, at the Feminist bus, the women's team's bus, is the youth, but also how many homegrown <coughs> players are on both teams. Talk, think about the men's. Obviously, you've got the veterans like Sergio Busquets, Sergio Roberto, Jordi Alba, but now you've got the Gavis, the Valdes, the Ansu Fatis as well. You think of the women's team. I was just looking at Claudia Pina. You've got Aldana Wamati. You've got Alexia Putellas, Laia Cudina, Jana Fernandez. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to forget about uh, San Patri Jarro also. All coming from the, from, from the youth teams. And... This must be a very special moment for them as well, the, the, with the Blaugrana identity they have, how they've felt this club since they were young kids. That, I think that that's the most important thing. Like, I think in football, like, OK, there's big stars that you can buy and everything. But I think in the bad moments, the most important thing is to have players that really love, uh, really love the colors and that are going to fight until the end uh, for for the shirt. And I think it's going to be super important for them, but also the achievements. Like for them, it's a dream to play at Barca. So imagine how it would be like winning titles with them. And I think we are seeing that in the women's team, and we are seeing uh, that also in the men's team. And that's one of the big keys because you were talking before about those leaves, about bringing here Lewandowski, about bringing here Kristen said Marcos Alonso and everything but you look up to the roots and the roots are Balde, are Ansu Fati, are Gabi, are all those youngsters that came from La Masia and that they know the style, they know the club and they love the club. I mean you think of the parades when Xavi Hernandez used to be a player for example, let's go 10 years back, 12 years back, these kids were probably out in the streets because yeah. they were youngsters back then. Absolutely. Subtract 10, uh, 12 years to the 21s, 20s, 19s we've got now. These kids were supporting Barca and now they're a part of this. And that's just part of the magic here that we've got so many players who have the Blaugrana roots. With their 
prior idol in, in Xavi Hernandez, even you know, leading the way and coaching them and absorbing all of his knowledge and uh, just executing it, you know, to near perfection. We could say. I mean, you know, if you look ahead, if we uh, look forward, there's we can expect still so much goodness to come from these players, given their talent and their youth. Uh, from for both the men's and the women's team, as you guys were touching on and before. And we were seeing there Jana Fernandez. Yeah. She, she, she comes from the academy, not even uh, only like Eric Garcia, for example. Yeah, yeah. like Eric Garcia. It's, it's, it's like because they wanted to play, uh, they wanted to learn Barca style and they ended up in the first team winning titles. And I think uh, that's a perfect dream. One of the, <laughs> two of the examples that have come from yeah. the Barca Escola and made it into the uh, respective first teams as the buses continue to make uh, progress. We're talking about Braulana Love. We usually do this on uh, Barca Live. We don't have the graphic today, but I'm going to ask the fans on YouTube and on Facebook to fill the live chats with Blaugrana Hearts, blue and red hearts, guys. I uh, want to see some Blaugrana Love there. I can already see some so from Invisible, from IC Scene, but Blaugrana Hearts. Uh, comment says, uh, where are we? SLS says, where's Pedri? He's on the bus. I've seen Pedri. Um, they're, they're all on the bus. No one is missing this celebration. Fans, as I said before, out celebrating on the Barcelona streets. A bus for the men's team, a bus for the uh, women's team. This is going to go on for the next three hours, two and a half to three hours. We'll be here reflecting on these La Liga titles, the men's and the women's team here, live on YouTube, on Facebook, on Barca TV Plus. Sergio Busquets waving to the fans from the top of a uh, of a bus in celebrating a title for the last time in his Barca career. He's done it several times. Busquets, the winner of 32 trophies now. We'll miss him. We'll miss him so much. And I think we were talking yesterday. He is a legend, but not only a Barca legend. He's a football legend. He changed football from that position. And it was incredible because when he came for the first team, we were talking here like it was today in his position. And uh, Guardiola had to say, oh, this kid is so good. We have to put the him there uh, on the field and he never looked back and I think uh, Busquets is the example of what we are seeing now with Pedri and Gabi, you know, like he, he, he was in that position. Let's listen to this, let's listen to this. You know it's got to be good. When Frankie de Jong and Lewandowski are bouncing. <laughs> like, 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 they're the I ones with the calm same. demeanor. <laughs> I, we, we saw yesterday, like in Ciudad Esportiva, Frankie de Jong, their second, and Lewandowski, Lewandowski were like more quiet, and it was like all the this Rafinha, Jordi Alba, Gabi, and all bouncing there. And when you see Frankie de Jong celebrating like that, it must be <laughs> good vibes. It's kind of like the. the, the <laughs> Northeast European character, isn't it? Yeah. They're just like more chill guys, calm guys. That they enjoy the moments in a less visible way. I'm sure that they, they, they're really happy and they really enjoy it. But uh, even though the most crazy party I believe it's a Dutch party. you going doesn't guess anyone going yes, definitely and we've seen the uh nice nice sharing is caring Javi. <laughs> we love it we love it i think they were asking for more this is like anyway hey, not nah, but anyway there continues the bus javi hernandez letting the moment sink in his second title as a Barca coach his first la liga title a fortunate fan there is going to get a signed yeah. jersey by wow. Araujo and Rafinha. Look at that. Amazing. That is, Amazing. That massive. Great to actually <laughs> get it to them because I've seen a couple of jerseys already <laughs> fail and, and just fall beside the bus. The, the most difficult part now is to get it. To get it back. The, the, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone else might take it. <laughs> exactly. As 
we continue the just... celebration of the La Liga title. I was thinking uh -huh. back to 2019. <laughs> when... <laughs> what is that? Like, I know there is. Just a jacket. <laughs> He's going, what should I do <laughs> with a denim jacket. Well, uh, people will just get anything signed. <laughs> well, actually, you see, some, some things don't actually reach. But anyway, I was reflecting yesterday, going back to 2019, because we started doing Barca Live in 2019. Joe Diego, you were, you were a part of the yeah. team then. And it feels like, I mean, it's four years, but it feels like maybe even a little bit more than that. A lot has happened since we've had a pandemic in the middle. Yeah. Iconic players have left. Luis Suarez was on that team, Leo Messi was on that team, we got the call with uh, Ivan Rakitic as well, Iniesta had only just left. Mm. So a lot has happened, and just if you put it into perspective later on, the turnaround that needed to happen with that veteran core turning it into a young team, you think, in the end, we've, we've managed to do it in four years. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the, the big question was right. I mean, how quickly can Barca replace? You mentioned the names, the Chavis, the Iniesta, the Messi, of course, leaving as well. Um, now and, Busquets. And now Busquets. It's uh, who will be his natural replacement. Um, and I think nobody. I mean, I, I, who saw Pedri coming? It was you know he Ramon filled Blanes. those shoes. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> well said. Well said. Because I mean, it, he was a, a blessing. Uh, his arrival was an absolute blessing. I remember when he came, there was talks of him, you know, going out on loan uh, to to a, a team in, in the Primera División, uh, staying Las Palmas for an extra year. But um, luckily, at the moment, Juan uh, Fumo quickly said after one practice, "No, no, we're going to keep this kid." in the team but i think nobody could have expected just how quickly he would have matured and filled the you know the, the, the massive footsteps and, and shadows that were left by uh, the midfielders that we touched upon earlier in that sense you know his perfect accompaniment or is accomplice if you will uh was somebody like gavi similar in age also i think their their mm, characters are, are a little bit similar i'm a little bit more introvert uh i think they vibe very well it's it's we could almost talk about pedri being a, a big brotherly figure towards gavi i mean we saw him at the was it the, I think it was the, the Golden Boy, the Copa mm. Award, where they both went, and, you know, it was very endearing to see those images of Pedri kind Pedri's of saying, like, the, like the cooler yeah. head. Yeah. Pedri, Pedri's definitely the cooler head. The cooler but, head, yeah. And I think this ends with, like, we were thinking, like, how are we going to replace Jordi Alba? There's no one yeah. in the market yeah. to replace Jordi Alba. And there yeah. it comes Alejandro Valde, uh, oh, and yeah. everything, all and, the pieces and, and have been replacing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic. By the way, I was listening there because I was listening uh, Diego, but also the celebration. <laughs> and Laia you weren't listening was, to me. It's uh, okay. Laia Cudina was already looking for the ratafia. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. A nice traditional Catalan uh, liqueur there, Laia Cudina. One of the many players, as we were talking about, who have grown up as uh, Blaugranas. A special moment as well for the women's team unbeaten so far in this La Liga season looking for their Champions League title in a couple of weekends yeah. in Eindhoven looking for the second Champions League title of the club's history for the women's team yeah yeah, and, and for for uh, the women's uh, football in Spain, like yeah. they they have changed everything, and uh, it's incredible because years ago when I started following Barca women's team, it was like it felt impossible to beat all the teams in Europe. You know, yeah. it felt like they were years ahead and everything, and they just started like training and putting more effort, and also the club has supported them and the fans and everything, and now they are the best team in in the world. Like all the coaches have said, like this is the best team in the world and they are the team to, to be beaten you know in Europe uh, and it's amazing and all of them they are so young and so talented that it's incredible we hope that second champions league comes and how much credit do you I mean we talked about the, the homegrown players of both the women's and the men's team but you know the women's team and the men's team have seen many new additions new faces you know the Jason Vicky Lopez so young of course or Salma Paraguay will so come sad. from she Villarreal cannot celebrate because he she's with the national team because okay yeah. right yeah but but they, they I mean they've they've mixed in so well they blended in they've gelled the in experience of the bronze yeah. Kira Walsh as well so I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think that talks super well like uh, all the work that Marcel Zubizarreta 
is doing with this team because uh, they don't go for the big stars, you know. Lique Martins was left this summer, uh, mm. uh, the same way Messi was left. And it's the first uh, the first league without Lique Martins that was like the big star uh, that Barca uh, signed years ago. And, and, and instead it comes Salma Parayuelo, which is 19 years old. It comes uh, Jason Ferreira, which is one of the best uh, uh, scorers in, in Brazil. Lucy Bronze before winning the, the Euro Cup. And I think the work that uh, Marco Pubizarreta uh, has done there is, is amazing because it's not about the names, but what the team needs that they are signing. We have Bruno Ballester following the uh, parade on foot and he's been talking to some fans. Bruno. Well, guys, we are here now turning in Numantia, the first street we are turning now, right? And here you can see that there are people with some... Very emotionated. No, what emotionated? What emotionated? Y aquí primera rueda que vais que vayé. Sí. No, 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 no. There's some people that has enjoyed uh, some parades. Other ones that is the first time. Well, you can see uh, how people are completely crazy. And uh, well, now the bus that will turn here, and all the people really excited on the streets of Barcelona. Fantastic. Oh, emotionated. emotionated. Yeah, the fans are obviously <laughs> working on their English there. <laughs> And obviously very excited to be out here with the double treat of celebrating with the men's team and the women's team on this uh, parade, celebrating the two league titles accomplished by Xavi Hernandez team and Jonathan uh, Giraldes team. And we've talked about the additions of the women's team. I want to talk a little bit about the impact of the signings we made last summer. We've got Koundé, Christensen, Kessie, Lewandowski, Rafinha, Marcos. Different caliber of players. Some coming on free transfers, some uh, which Barca made an effort to bring. Let's start with Lewandowski. Because we were talking about this in post-game last night and in the, in the initial celebration after the league title. Obviously, the goals are important. 21 so far in La Liga, 31 in total in all competitions. And he did go through a little bit of a drought there coming... Off of the uh, of the World, World Cup break Cup, and yeah. that three-game ban that he had yeah. uh, after the sending off in, in in Pamplona, now he's back to his scoring ways. The goals are important, definitely, and having someone up there who can put the ball in the back of the net in tough situations. But everyone has spoken highly of him in terms of the veteran leadership he's Absolutely. brought to this team. Yeah, exactly. I think that's one of his primary qualities, right? I mean, that leadership that he brings to the team both on and off the pitch. I mean, we know that on the pitch he's a pro and uh, he's, you know, a world-class player, a superstar, but off the pitch as well. I mean, he takes care of himself, uh, takes care of his body, follows a very strict regimen in that sense. So obviously, it, I guess it helps that his wife is a nutritionist, <laughs> right? But, uh, I mean, he uh, brings all of that into the locker room as well. And I think many of the young players have gravitated towards that, sort of seeing him as a, a, a guidance or, or, yeah, a source of guidance in that sense. We know Gavi, for example, and Levy, of course, have a very close relationship yeah. in that regard. So, I mean, it's, it's, it must be so, such a relief for Xavi to have a, a veteran leadership in, in the form of, of the Lenin Muski. We, we actually put together a video when we had media day interviews with both of them, and we put together a video of that relationship with the 18-year-old yeah. with the 34-year-old yeah. Lewandowski. Um, and just how, what it's like, because they speak different languages. <laughs> <laughs> They're totally different ages, but they understand each other on the pitch. Gavi has, prov um, sorry, uh, Lewandowski has provided like the guidance. Gavi said that he's like a coach on the on the, on the pitch. He sometimes says, no, just move a little bit closer because then that gives me the advantage, for example. On the other hand, Lewandowski mentioned, I look at Gavi and if it's a game that I'm not feeling it uh, for some reason or other. I look at the effort that he puts in and I think, no, I, I need to run like he does. Interesting. I, I think that's the Gabi effect on all the teammates, you yeah. know, because when you see someone running like this, uh, Gabi put the same effort even if it's like, I don't know, you play with a four division team uh, or you play El Clasico. And I think that you bring that energy to the, the rest of the team. I'm talking about Lewandowski. It's not only with Gabi because we have seen, we've been talking like a lot about like, 
that road that Lewandowski was not scoring and everything but it was because Pedri was not there the connection yeah. he has with Pedri is special and I think alongside with all the strikers the connection that Lewandowski has with Ansu Fati and has been proven alongside the season especially in the beginning of the season is also special like he, he has a certain relationship with all the youngsters of the team that I think was also important for them mentally you talk about all the players uh, feeling that when they see Gavi's effort and going from one side to the other and never stops running, how they want to, to they feel like at least they have to equal that Match level them, of, yeah. of, of passion and effort. I would encourage them not to go in head first on 50-50 <laughs> divided ball situations on, on the ground. I would encourage Gavi not to do that anymore either. Uh, well, yes. It's obviously one of the iconic images <laughs> of the season. But it's, uh, what, what you were saying, it you know, like with with uh, Pedri, we saw that in the in the gambit already. It, it, it was there in front of us so early on already in the first game, of, or if you want to call it, official game of, of Lewandowski, at least at the Camp Nou. Uh, the way he was linking up with Pedri was like, oh, there's something really nice brewing here. You know, they, they had this blind. Uh, yeah, uh, and I think the fact that Lewandowski was not scoring for I don't know how many matches it was, it was also because of that missing relationship with Pedri. We're an hour into this parade and we've still got a couple to go. The bus is moving throughout the city of Barcelona, celebrating the men's and the women's league titles. Alexia Putella is enjoying this moment. Let's reflect on that a little bit as well, because obviously Alexia has only just come back from that injury that she suffered last June before the, the, the Euros with the national team. She's missed the entirety of the season. She'll be available for the Champions League final, obviously coming off of the injury. Um, you have to assume that she might not start, maybe she'll get some minutes. But still, there as a presence, and the way the team have dealt with that absence, the absence of the two-time Ballon d'Or winner. Exactly, the best player in the world. Yeah, and I would say that absence, and we have seen, we were talking before about the leg, uh, Aitana Bonmati. I think Aitana Bonmati took that spot in terms of leadership in, in the field in terms of goals those goals like because we have to remember like we always say like how many goals Alexia has scored she's a midfielder like she's not a striker and she scored many goals uh, the last season she's the best in the world of course it's going to take time to recover that because it's not an easy injury to recover from uh, she also came back earlier than all the rest of the players uh, after suffering that injury she's working so hard to be the same Alexia and to have some minutes in the final of Eindhoven she needs at least to play one minute to, to have the title if Barca wins it and uh, we have seen in the like, a couple last two games uh, how she's starting to recover some moves and everything and and how the um, all the, the teammates look at her like smiling, like she's coming back. And as you said before, like it is amazing the, the work that the team has done. Because imagine other team like with the, be, uh, with the best player injured. Uh, it's not easy to no, do no. a season uh, as they did with, with that injury. Like, it's we, the best one. We've seen it with the, with the men's team as well. I mean, had significant injuries throughout the season. At the beginning, it was the centre backs. There was one point in which we were Araujo less, Kunde less, and Christensen less. We paid the consequences in Europe, but managed to make our way through uh, the La Liga. Then, all of a sudden, in another key moment, we were left without Pedri and Frankie de Jong, two, two of our prime creators. Still, we powered through it, and here we are celebrating a league title. Mm -hmm. With regards to, to the women's team, Irati, what you were saying, do, are you surprised by uh, Aitana Bomanti being such a prolific go goal scorer this mm -hmm. season? I mean, she's what, like the, the fourth, fifth top goal scorer of the, the team, and it, you think that was mm -hmm. a conscious effort of her to sort of no, everyone said, like, without Alexia, Tana had to, to take the step on and uh, leadership the team. And I think I'm not surprised because, as I said before, I think it's the most competitive player I've ever seen. Mm. Like, she's always focused and uh, with that angry face she puts, like, it means, like, she's concentrated and uh, and she always wants to improve. Even when she's winning titles, she's thinking about the next step. And I, I think that's a big effort. And talking about injuries, I think what Jonathan Hialdi is most careful about today is, like, to don't have any injury because Lucy Bronze and Aaron Rolfo are still recovering from the injuries and they are big pieces for that final in Eindhoven. There are Gabi and Dembele yeah. having a nice time. Gabi bouncing because he can't keep still for <laughs> more than two minutes. <laughs> Fantastic yeah, energy guys in Barcelona celebrating this La Liga title that we won yesterday in a game. I mean, I have to admit, I was very surprised because just because you think of the derbies against Espanyol and, and 
like the one, for example, this season at the Spotify Cup. No, I'm, I'm going to go back to that point. But let's listen to the players. Let's listen to the players mm -hmm. sing and dance. Classics there, and uh, fans celebrating from the balconies as well. I feel like it's cheating a little bit. You've got yeah. an apartment there, and you get to, <laughs> to see it from up top. Anyway, a privilege for privilege. Uh, them. Yeah, definitely, a privilege for them. Uh, can anyone remember where I was? I've, I've, I've <laughs> I said put a pin in that, and I've lost the pin. No, yes, you were saying um, the game against Espanol. Game surprised. against Espanol, exactly. Yes. Uh, thank you, Diego. I, Think back to the game at the Spotify Cup. No, last day of uh, 2022. Mucky game, gritty game, two red cards, Espanol score on the yeah. penalty, games with lots of tackles, tend to be games with lots of cards. And you think, ah, hostile atmosphere, RCD Stadium, a lot at stake for Espanol. Yeah. They're going to come out like knife between their teeth. And it was like that for four minutes. Because I remember in the first four minutes yesterday, one Espanol player goes down, makes a meal of it. Then Busquets goes down, makes a meal of it. All of a sudden, Barca are in control. And leave. look away for a minute, look back, Barca are 3-0 up. I think I one's back to that. Like we said before the game, like the most important thing is to forget about the environment, about forget about everything, and just focus on the ball and focus on football. And I think what's the is what they did in the yeah. first half uh, and how we could accomplish that. One of the best first half you've seen this season, would you say? I would say maybe the best. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, you know, I, we, I said that yesterday. We we were kind of uh, discussing it, debating it. Obviously, the recency bias took us to that point, but I think back to the first half of the Classic at the Spotify Cup. No, this, we did go into half time tied at one, uh, one all, and it was a late Sergio Roberto goal. Think of the amount of chances that Barca created in that first half against Real Madrid. It was unbelievable yeah. that it was one all because Real Madrid scored quite a fortuitous goal. And, uh, it's a Vinicius cross that goes off of Araujo. Barely created any more chances. Exactly. Barca dominated. So I would say that that first half is also in uh, in contention also for best the first half. Also uh, Super Copa. Yeah, yeah. yeah, true, true. But if we're talking about the league, I'd say the one yesterday, there's the, uh, the, the classical one. And then I also remember 20 very good minutes at La Ceramica against Villarreal. We score and then the game takes yeah, a turn for the worst yeah. and we end up winning 1-0. Uh, but those 20 minutes were excellent uh, football at La Dinamica. I agree, yesterday, Barca getting the job done when it needed to get done, not letting the pressure get to them, not letting the atmosphere get to them. Like they were focused, you could tell, like on the faces and then the extra energy they would bring in, the rhythm, everything was working perfect because you, you could tell that they were giving an extra motivation and an extra... Uh, next for thing that the Espanol players were doing. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was bizarre. It was strange watching that game as well, and, and the atmosphere that was within the stadium. And you know, obviously, it's not a good time if you're a Perico, if you're an Espanol fan, uh, uh, for obvious reasons, right? They're fighting for survival uh, once again, but and seeing their city rivals uh, take such a commanding lead in the first half isn't easy. But I. I no, I, I don't think I've ever experienced a league win with such a, regardless of, of the pitch invasion, but but just the atmosphere. I don't remember, you know, witnessing a league being won with such a, a strange atmosphere uh, surrounding it. But uh, definitely, because you, you feel like the stadium's going to be you know, boiling for the full 90 minutes, and within 40 of those, yeah. The game was over. It was over, over, absolutely. It was a pity though that uh, then in the end, like the team, I think they were uh, thinking more on the party and celebrating the title, and they just uh, the last lost. 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. They, they lost that focus, and it was a pity for uh, their second record. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The only thing I was thinking. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was a shame as well. Yeah. That yeah. They kind of let go towards the end. It's normal. As well. Yeah, They're it's thinking normal. More about I mean, the, the, the celebration. Yeah. Espanol did have a few good chances. Mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking. Well, I mean, let's not get too relaxed. Here. <laughs> yeah. Too comfortable. 
The celebrations continue. Frankie de Jong there in the uh, centre. Our colleague Sarah yes, Salabor, uh, yeah. I'm sure, getting lots of good footage that we'll see on Barca's social media. Our camera, Ignazi Martin as well, the photographer, Henran Parga, but also Sergio Busquets, Marcos Alonso, enjoying this moment Everybody together. except for Bruno, basically. Exactly. <laughs> well, Bruno's on foot. Bruno's on foot. As the buses approach Plaza Catalunya, if you've been to Barcelona, you'll uh, recognise that spot. It's right in the middle of the city. I'd say we're halfway through this. Yeah, I mean... Spotify Camino to Plaza Catalunya. I reckon it's going to take a while to get around Plaza mm. Catalunya. As the buses make progress there, Jordi Alba, Sergio Roberto, Marcos Alonso, bouncing. I always wonder when, when you're on, on, on the buses with these celebrations, there are moments in... You, you want to please all of the fans that you've got in front yeah, of you, maybe but you there are moments <laughs> that you need, you need a breather as well. <laughs> you need a time out, don't you? I guess that's when you go under. For, you can't be singing yeah. for three hours on loop, can you? That's where you yeah. go down the stairs, maybe. It, it feels like a marathon. You cannot do give your 100% in the first 10 minutes because otherwise you're done for the rest. Do, Robert, do you know what the record, where the record sits in terms of uh, attendance for a Rua like this? No, no, I'm not sure. I mean, it must be very complicated to calculate as well. Yeah. yeah. As I was seeing Gavi enjoy uh, a little estrella there, I was thinking, oh, well, he's 18 now, it's legal, it's legal. No. Oh. The fans enjoying it from the streets, from the balconies, the men's and the, music the women's is good. team celebrating these titles. Look at them having fun there from the balcony. And the fans out enjoying it. Alexia Putellas not missing a moment of it. With Sandra Paños, Marta Torrejón, Irene Paredes in the background as well. Fantastic times in the city of Barcelona celebrating these two titles. And we hope there'll be more to come. As Diego was saying, we've got all the professional teams competing for titles. The women's team will be going to Eindhoven to try and clinch back that uh, Champions League. We've also got the handball team going to Cologne in in June, in mid-June. Yeah. I'm going to Cologne as well uh, to support them. 17th of uh, June, they'll be fighting for their Champions League. We've got the Euro League final. The Euro League. Oh, well, top semi -final, final four. Semi-final against semi -final, Real Madrid. Semi-final <laughs> against Real Madrid on Friday. Friday and That's going to be a big one in Cornus as well. Yeah. In Lithuania. And, of course, some of the teams still fighting for their leagues as well. Mm -hmm. The women's team chanting. Barca Atletic, body, 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 promotion, <laughs> yeah, perhaps also. with a chance. A chance of promotion for Barca Atletic as well. So there's, there's still uh, a lot to compete for for the club in what's remaining of the season. These uh, next uh, two months, let's say, month and a half. Kira Walsh, first one for her as well. She signed last summer. Yeah. Must be absolutely delighted to be able to celebrate this. She, she was a Xavi Hernandez fan. She always told when she came here that when she was little, her dad was uh, always showing to her like some Xavi and Iniesta videos and, uh, and the big references uh, she had when she was little. As we didn't have uh, women's, women's. Uh, reference exactly. when we were little, it, it was Xavi Hernandez. So it has to be amazing for her being celebrating this right now. I'm sure she, uh, before the parade got going, she yeah. got her pick in there with uh, <laughs> with Xavi Hernandez. We saw Xavi talking to uh, Alexia Apudellas as well before. Just great moments. Where, where do you think Alexia sits in terms of idols now? You know, you, you talk about uh, when Keira was, Keira was small, she didn't have female idols. Does she? I'm, I'm not sure because I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain I've, I've heard Alexia talk about the players that she used to like when she was growing up because she was a Barca fan as well. There's that famous picture of her at the uh, Camp Nou. I can't remember right now uh, who what, she said her idol yeah. was. What is clear is now she's a reference for kids, mm. you know, and I think that's the most important thing that this Barca team is doing, you know, because me, myself, when I was little, I didn't know I could play football because there were no women's yeah. references. My idols were Ronaldinho, then it, it, it was Xavi, then it was Iniesta, but never a woman. And I think it's the most important thing that Alexia and all this team has changed is that, that you see kids, even boys, like wearing a Mappy Leon shirt, Alexia shirt and everything. And I think that's really important i'd say so far the uh, mvp of the uh, men's team's bus is the ronald yeah <laughs> moving from one side to the other 
sharing moments with the fans, waving. We saw him sign a jersey as well. There he is, having the time of his life. Ronald Araujo with that uh, special hairdo yesterday. Yeah. The, uh, yeah blood and the stripes. Yeah. He said he's going to keep it until the end of the season. Nice. Nice, nice. Araujo. He's another player that, I mean, that came, you know, he's, he's not a Masia product. He, he came for Barça Athletic, uh, really, but that has so quickly gelled and, and um, culturally also yeah. made mixed in with, with the local culture and really uh, has understood the spirit of Barça, I think, very, very quickly. We, we, um, who was it that was, uh, I think it was Xavi, right? He was quoting... Henri, or maybe it was the other way, Henri was saying that when he first came to Barca, he didn't understand the Mesquion Club motto, but that Xavi uh, told him about it. He said, just, you know, wait until you start achieving things here and, and, and start scoring goals for Barca, winning trophies for Barca. That's when you understand uh, what Mesquion Club all stands for and what it really truly means. And, uh, you know, we were talking about Salman Parayuelo, Parayuelo earlier and, and that another player that I think has is, is hit the ground running and just... Uh, well, so, uh, li uh, most literally, yeah. <laughs> she, she couldn't decide whether she wanted to be a football player or an <laughs> athlete. <laughs> Ultimately decided on football and here she is. Yeah, yeah amazing. And she's one of, of the future stars, but I think she's already present for this club. It's still so young as well. It's, it's 19 years old, like it's crazy. Flags waving in the city of Barcelona. As the buses approach Plaza Catalunya, the city centre. What I'm seeing there, like we were talking about the youngsters of, of both teams, but I'm I'm watching the celebration and yesterday also in Canaletas uh, and now here and there's many teenagers. And the same way I said, like uh, for me, all my childhood on when I was teenager, it was just winning, 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 winning because it was like Barca's uh, of Guardiola, of Rijkaard and with Enrique. These teenagers has lived and grow up in the, in those important ages without Barca titles. So for them, this must be the most important Barca day. Pedri Garcia de Pedri. We haven't seen Pedri for a little bit. No. Mark andre to Stegen, I mean, we'll, we'll have to talk about his season at some point, won't we? Yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, we haven't asked the live chat uh, anything for, uh, for a bit, so I'll put a question out there for you guys. I'll, I'll put it out there for the live chat. Live chat. Speaking of just La Liga, men's La Liga, who is the MVP of the season? Mm. I think to Stegen... <sighs> for me, it's it him. has... Yeah. He's in clear contention. Yeah. Is he the clear choice? Let's see what the fans say first on the uh, live chat. Um, as Alia says, Robert, can you tell Diego I say hi? It's great to see him on Barca Live again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he WhatsApp me. Thank you, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and, and again, uh, a shout out to all you fans. So uh, I see some Testegen votes here. I see a Christensen from King DS. Jurgis says Mark andre to Stegen. Rushir Argawal says Rafinha. He's had some key moments as well. Paulat Ertutan says to Stegen. Um, Imena says Araujo and to Stegen. Afrin Alam says Mark andre to Stegen. Alia says to Stegen. Iraqi Angel says Araujo. Baylor says Pedri. Ayush says Araujo. Uh, another Araujo vote uh, here on the uh, live chat. Uh, to Stegen. Lots of people were, uh, voting to Stegen. Frank House says Wall Stegen. Matthew <laughs> Sheldon says to Stegen as well. Amazing numbers, obviously. 25 clean sheets, 13 goals conceded. You have to count in those uh, two that the team conceded uh, last night as well as they kind of let their guard down. And one of the popular... Catalan song sounds now from the uh, Buos. And the players enjoying it there on top of the bus. I'm talking about, about key players. Who do you think was the key, the MVP of the women's uh, team? Well, wait a minute. Have, have yeah. we decided on to stay in for the men's team? Uh, for I, I, me, it's me here. It's Ter well, yes. When you win that one nil up many times and all those amazing saves he has done. And yeah. 13 goals in 34 matches, I think it's 
outstanding numbers. And and, and and just his form as well. I mean, it's yeah. it's you know, obviously you, you can argue that the clean sheets is a collective effort, the whole yeah. entire defense. I mean, but we yeah. talk about Araujo Christensen has proved you know vital as well in the back. But, of but it. also like okay, it's a defense, but there were many saves that yeah. the, it, it exactly. was him alone. It was, him it was alone. like miracles. But that's, a, that's there. a point. Yeah, exactly. There's one nil, one nil wins. You didn't have to save many shots because Barca one of the good things was they didn't concede very many goals but they didn't allow opponents to have clear chances yeah. throughout the season either yeah. but there was that one two situations mm. every game in which someone run free one on one with Ter Stegen and we saw it was. yesterday we saw, we saw it, it yesterday, yesterday in the second half was 20 minutes that the team was not focused enough like there were like four three opportunities for Espanyol and it was yeah. like so frustrating for them because they were just in front of Ter Stegen yeah. and there was no way to, to score and, and Ooh, just a like, long comment yeah. here sorry Diego uh, Silvi says to be honest it has to be Araujo Ter Stegen was incredible but Araujo did just uh, didn't just help defensively, but also attacking and leadership. But I've given it to Ma uh, Mark Andrew Stegen because of the clean sheets and important saves. Mm. So, a division of opinions there in, in that uh, comment. In my uh, opinion, uh, Zapaloni says the MVP season is Stegen, Lewandowski, Gavi, Pedri, Ronald Araujo, but who can choose? It's a very difficult question. I, I wanted to uh, just reflect on this, Idati, because you know on Barca Live, after every game, we do man of the match. And we give three points to the best, two points to the runner-up, one point uh, to the third player. What do you think our top five of the season? Because I did the math, mm. I went back to every show, mm. and I added the scores up. What do you think our top five was? Because uh, I think you'll find it surprising. Surprising. Yeah, I think in the beginning we, had, we gave many to Lewandowski. Like, in the beginning of the season there were many to Lewandowski. I think... For, in general, for me, Ter Stegen will be the MVP. But when you watch football matches, like we mostly forget about him. Like we forget about the goalkeeper. So do we have to say them in order or just five? <laughs> try, try, try in order. You're, I, I said your five thought and, is and then. Eh? So go, go one, go one, because your, your train of thought is correct here. Okay, uh, there, uh, uh, Lewandowski is one. Lewandowski is one. We gave Gabi him a total has, of 104 be. points, Lewandowski. 104? Four points. Gabi must be another mm -hmm. on the list. He is fifth oh, on the list wow. with 40 okay. points. <laughs> so he's in the three in between. Pedri? Pedri hasn't played enough games, that's yeah. the problem. Pedri missed a, a big chunk of the yeah. season. Yeah. Gary Frank is going to be in there. Araujo must be there. Uh, no? Not wow. in the top five. Wow, I was wow. very surprised. This is very interesting. Right, so I'm going to reveal it. Okay. No, no, let, let, let me... Um, Thank I'm you, just sure going to go and say... I'll, I'll give you... Rafinha. Rafinha is second. Rafinha say, must be Stegen there. Stegen is yeah. not even wow. second. Lewandowski, Rafinha. Balde must be in there. Oh, no? Yes. Nope. Mm. How do, how we well, I mean, we've just given uh, MVP, <laughs> MVP to our third candidate. Okay, after Stegen's there, I think we always okay. forget about him. The Stegen's there. Okay, and then there's one missing, which must Diego be Frankie. It has to yeah. be Frankie, yeah, it's Frankie. So, on Man of the Match, we've, as I say, um, we give three points to the best player, two points to the runner-up, one point to the third best player of the game. Sometimes it's a tough exercise because the team hasn't performed well and you're just like, yeah. well, this player did this little thing in this game, which was good. Other times it's complicated because it's a complete performance by the whole team and it's hard to pick someone out. And in those games, to Stegen does get forgotten. Yeah. Even yeah. though he's kept the clean sheet and pro probably made a big save that kept the That's team true. in it. But for the total of the season so far, we've given Lewandowski 104 points, Rafinha 86, to Stegen 60, Frankie de Jong, 57, and Gabi, 40. Wow. Surprised me, Gabi, with 40 only. And the thing I found surprising is I went back to what you voted, what Bruno voted, what I voted. <laughs> you have a tie at the top with 25 points for Lewandowski and 25 for Rafinha. And I counted this. You've only given Gabi four points this season, Irati. Really? Wow. <laughs> that surprised myself even. <laughs> Putting Irati on blast. How, how do you and, explain that, Irati? And the, you, you counted <laughs> only the third one. The I, first I, 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 so your top five for this season is Lewandowski, Rafinha, Testegen, Ansu and De Jong. Same as me. Uh, Ansu and 
I feel like we always give answers to sympathy points yeah. as well. Because we come back in the second half and we want him to do well and we see yeah. him do a couple of good things I've well. So we always, always, give, him, we always give him like fan, the one yeah. point or when he scores yeah. we give him the two. So yeah. Only four for Gabby. Is, 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 is on top of our rankings, yeah. He's That's higher than that album, for example. That's it's crazy. See, it, it is crazy. It is, and, and sometimes, obviously, it's tough for us because the game ends uh, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, wait, wait a minute, we need yeah, to do yeah, the point. You so you're, you're, you're thinking it, yeah. quickly on, on, on the... On the um, just as the game is finished there. Uh, and sometimes... You, you and sometimes you would choose like five or six yeah. players. Exactly. What about the women's team then? What would you... I think the a... MVP of this season for me it's Fridolina Rosso. Ah. So, I mean, he she came here as a striker. We were like, no, she's not a, a Barca style and everything, and all of a sudden, uh, Jonathan Giraldes changed her into the position, into that left back position, and she has become the best in the world in that position. And of course, it has to be between her and uh, Caroline Graham Madsen. Yeah, yeah. But she has been injured so much yeah. and she she's performing really well Still, and she's exactly. so fit for I know until yes. it's the great news but alongside the, the season I would say Zaitana Bonmati or mm. Fridolina Rolfo because mm. Rolfo has been outstanding I'm gonna go with my three play, favorite players to watch in the women's team having seen them live at Camp Nou I also like reaffirm this one is Patrick Guijarro also like uh, Patrick Guijarro in football, midfield for, watching her work in her. midfield yeah. is amazing and it was even more amazing when she played in the defensive midfield role which is now, now it's usually Kira Walsh yeah. in the absence of Alexia Putellas uh, uh, Patrick has been moved into more like the interior position still amazing to, to, to see her work just how she does things so simply the simple moves like the Busquets she's, yeah. she's the Busquets of that uh, team then as you mentioned Aitana Bomati the, the, the creative mind of that team, the one who gets things going, the one who makes the runs, who arrives into the box, who scores the goals. She's, she's had a high goal scoring season. And then the, the best player who's never going to win an award just because of her yeah. totally chill demeanor and she doesn't want any of the uh, spotlight who's Caroline Graham Hansen. Mm. I was talking the other day with some journalists that mm, didn't watch like so many women's football and we were watching the semi-finals of the Champions League and they told me like, a, like Caroline yeah. Hansen, like could play, play in any men's team. Yeah. Like she, she's by far the best uh, winger of, of, of whole Barca. Yeah. Like including uh, first uh, men's team uh, and women's team. And I, I think it's true. Like I don't know how the world forgets about her. I think it's impossible to forget about her anymore in the Ballon d'Or or, or any prize. I think maybe because still in women's uh, sport it's still super important. All the marketing thing yeah. and yeah. everything. And, but it's incredible because I, I think she's just one or three or four steps above everyone in her position. Hey, and t talking about forgotten people, we, we addressed the importance and uh, of, of a key figure such as Marco Andre Ter Stegen. Sandra Paño has also made crucial, crucial saves uh, throughout the season and in many games where you know she will only get tested maybe once or twice given the sheer dominance uh, from uh, from the Barça Femini team where, where do you rank her importance and aportación her, her what she brings to the team I think what was most important of Sandra Paños this season it was like in summer she got super criticized but mm. all the environment all the press uh, because of what happened with the national team and everything the, uh, there were many talks uh, with uh, from Madrid and and she was mentally not in the best moment of his uh, of uh, her career mm. and she bounced back from that and performed really well in the Champions League especially because the league we we have seen also Gemma we have seen Kata yeah. in the end recovering from True. from the injury so that also means like Jonathan Giralde they gives minutes to all the goalkeepers uh, uh, and Barca Femini have to three really good goalkeepers by the way have you I, I don't know if this is just me I, I want to put it out there Jonathan Giraldez, the way he speaks, his mannerisms, th does it remind you of Pep Guardiola sometimes? Or is that just me? <laughs> I, I feel like so his press Never conferences. Never thought about. Yeah, yeah, I feel like his press conferences, his mannerisms. What, what impressed something. me more is like he's not Catalan and speaks yeah, uh, well, even better than Catalan. Yeah, that's super yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 It's just a, a calm presence in, yeah. That, yeah. in that dressing room, which yeah. I think is, is something that you need as well. Um, just very poised, very realistic, he never gets, you never see him get overexcited. Yeah. And I feel that's just 
the demeanour you need now with, with such talented teams. Yeah. Just someone who's going to keep a cool head to highs and lows. Yeah, and, and I would say more, more, more in a women's locker room. Like, yeah. we we are more difficult to manage. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in terms of emotionally, like, <laughs> emotions, like, I think it's hard. Like, I've been playing sport all my whole life, and all the coaches have told me. Like, uh, in, in a women's locker room, it's more important emotion than uh, than what you do on the gym or, or stuff. That's interesting. Uh, and I think a calm person like Jonathan Giraldez also brings that to the team. Well, the buses keep moving throughout the city of Barcelona. We're celebrating the Barca League trophies. The men's and the women's teams have both won La Liga this season and the fans are out in the streets celebrating in this uh, parade, which has been going on now for about an hour and a half. It left the Spotify Camp now and it's going to the Arc of Triumph in Barcelona. That means we're going uh, west to east. What are they, when they get there, what is the plan? I mean, people are not going to go home. It just ends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it, guys. They're going go to home follow now. the buses home. <laughs> yeah. I imagine that they've got somewhere for the buses to to go and like uh, allow the, the, the players to I, get out, because otherwise I, um, it's just going to be out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I live next to Arde Triomphe, and this morning I went to the gym, which is just by close Arde Triomphe, and they were like preparing some stands there and everything. Yeah. I don't know how, how I mean, it's there, going there, to there work. Might, there might be some speeches. I'm, I'm mm. not sure. I don't think there are. Mm. There is the uh, view from the women's team bus uh, with Jana Fernandez, with Alexia Putellas enjoying this moment. Kira Walsh, let's hear what, they, what they're chanting. In the background there, I can hear our colleague Carla Garcia interviewing in English. <laughs> so the, uh, I'm assuming she's talking to either Lucy Bronze or with Kira Kira. Walsh. I think it was Kira Walsh. What a privilege for our colleagues to be there on that on those buses. We've seen Sarah Salapo, we've been seeing Carla Garcia, Mar Brau, we've seen Maya Rostro Rostra, as well. Yeah. So all of them being able to enjoy this uh, moment. Un día de partido being sung on the Femini bus. Mariana Caldente. Also there, Mapi Leo. Right. Oh, we haven't wall. seen much of Mapi. No, and I, I, I felt, or I think she's like a party girl. I do feel like she's one of the ones with character that yeah. uh, is going to enjoy a good party as the uh, parade continues. Right. We've talked about MVPs. We posed this question yesterday. I'm going to try and get the live chat going as well see what their opinions are. Think back to this La Liga season. Let's go with what was the best game. You can think of it like emotionally, late drama, best performance, uh, most complete performance. The one that, that you remember the most. Okay, like for me the best I think it's a classico. Like after, we, uh, but for me, uh, the Supercopa Classico was better. But mm. if you think on the league, mm. like I think a classico because it was the day that we say, okay, we are going to win this league. Even though it was not finished, it was not clinched. But the uh, Barca fans felt, and uh, and it wasn't a, a great match. Barca played really well, and also we paid. Real Madrid back with the same coin, they always win the matches, you know, and it felt like so, like, like the, the emotions uh, going on there with that Frank Garcia goal were amazing. But if I think on key moments, I think it's the, the first match against Rayo it was, like we draw, yeah. mm -hmm. because everything was like, oh no, we're not going to do anything this season and oh. everything, and, yeah. and the team bounced was, was back really well, well. People were ready to go into Armageddon mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it remembered me kind of the beginnings of Jose Guardiola era, you know? Then uh, El Sadar against Osasuna. That's one that uh, I wanted to mention. Yandrak because on uh, YouTube says, uh, on the YouTube live chat says, away against Osasuna. That feels like a pivotal moment. Yeah. You're going into the uh, World Cup break, chance to stay at the top of the league because we'd only just regained that, uh, that leading spot. You get Lewandowski sent off. Piquet sent off. Piquet sent off at oh, half-time as well. Oh, on the last take the lead early on in the game yeah. on a clear push-off of, Mar of Mar Marcos Alonso. And, and somehow ball. in the second half, the team mustered the courage to, to turn it around. That's the, the mentality we were talking about before. The thing yeah. of beauty. 
Yeah. The the Rafinha goal. The, yeah. That was that was beautiful. It, this this is a hard question. Osasuna was was a great win. The two Osasuna wins. Because yeah. a couple of weeks ago, was Jordi Alba's late goal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, in Osasuna side that had been, you could argue, punched, been punching above their weight the, throughout their entire season. I mean, Copa finalists and, and, and doing ever so so well with, with uh, Arresate as, as manager and, and losing a key figure like, like Chimi Avila. But, I mean, the Clásico will always be a Clásico, isn't it? I mean, for what it stands for, everything. Uh, I wouldn't take away the win against Espanyol. I mean, you know, I know <laughs> there's recency. De- <laughs> I can't afford Frankie de Jong. Greeting, <laughs> Frankie de Jong. <laughs> well, she, she must have gotten that from a store somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. <laughs> and Frankie's the, looking right the, now, right? The, I mean, or not? The, the game against Betis. The one there. Yeah. yeah. That was probably... The most complete performance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even though Barca let in a goal later on, it was a Koundé own goal. Barca absolutely yeah. dominated against Betis at the Villarreal in, in in La Liga. There's also the two Atletico games, the two one nil wins, especially the one at the TV. Because yeah. you think back to that with Araujo clearing off the line yeah. late on in those three crucial points. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There were many points this season we said we ended up the game saying like these are the games that win championships. Uh, I, and it was like that with crucial moments, as you said, like uh, Araujo just going there on the line to take that ball away and, uh, and, and like little moments all around. But for me, everything started at El Salah. It's a good shout. It's a good shout, uh, especially because of the fact that we were going into that month and a half break. Yeah. And to go in as league leaders, I feel like that's important. That's important. Then there's obviously like uh, key moments in which uh, it's happened a couple of times this uh, season in the league, which Real Madrid dropped points, and then we weren't able to capitalize yeah. on that. We, we we lost in Almeria. We drew nil nil to to Girona. All those one nil wins as well. I mean, some of them were <laughs> late pushes from our opponents. I think back to the Filter game, for example, one nil at the Camp Nou. Pedri scores, and then in the second half, Filter. Uh, take over in, you've La got the, also. in La Ceramica against Villarreal that 1-0 the two Atletico ones you've got also the um, the Getafe one at the Spotify Camp Nou which yeah. passes score but then you've got the Mayoral one-on-one with Ter Stegen Just so many key moments in, yeah. in, in this season yeah that game Ter Stegen had a, a bunch of saves I mean how Getafe didn't manage to put one past them was just speaks volumes of, of Marco Andre Ter Stegen that one yeah What's yours then? I'm going to divide it into categories. Uh-huh. Emotionally, <laughs> yeah. classical. Yeah. Because of the, the, the late Cassier goal. It was also, as I said before, a great first half as well. Yeah. Uh, then yeah. in the second, Real Madrid maybe dominated late in the game. There's that key moment with Asensio's goal disallowed by just yeah. a, a nothing uh, correctly disallowed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how things could have changed there. It goes from us being 11 points ahead in La Liga to them being six points behind us. That's right. So that's one of the uh, moments, definitely. In terms of football, the Betis game was really good. The Betis game was was really good. Uh, and, and we had the recent uh, precedent against them of the Super the Copa. Super Copa well, yeah. A come and go game as well. Two all penalties. Penalties. Think, yeah. think of that as well. A penalty shootout. What if you, if yeah, Stegen right. doesn't uh, have a fantastic shootout, you I don't go through to the final, and, they, and, and then you don't go to the final and beat Real Madrid in the way you did. Uh, and for maybe me, maybe the season goes maybe maybe season, differently. Yeah. Completely. For me, that final against Real Madrid is the best moment of the season. It's the turning point yeah. of the season. It's when now they believe it. Yeah. yeah. And 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 curiously enough, it's been the same in both seasons because. If you go back to, to, to last year when Xavi arrived, the first title he had to fight for was the Supercopa, and we lost in the semis against Real Madrid. Exactly. But it was a game in which it was two all. We went to the extra time. Barca dominated. Real Madrid hit us it on the counter It was the first attack. day you could believe, okay, this team is coming back. You felt this team 100%. could compete yeah. with Real Madrid. And you think of the speech of President Laporta in front of the, uh, the whole dressing room and, and, and the gloomy faces of the, the, the players who didn't necessarily want to hear that at that time. Yeah. But it was true. Mm. It was true. They were proud of how the team competed and it felt like the team had a chance. And from there, they grew. And they went from ninth spot in La Liga to second uh, when, when, when they ended. And this year, it's the same. You win the Super Cup, 
And all of a sudden that builds confidence in the team. And I think the way you did it also, because I think it's one of the best matches of of the season this far, like, yeah. like from the team. like And against Real Madrid, you know, in, in a final, that brings everything and that brings enough <laughs> energy to, so, to win the rest yeah and i i, I want to like i feel that that is the difference one of the big difference between the two sets of fans uh you know the, the madridistas and culés is the how is so important here in this house for barca fans um the way in which you dismantle uh suppress dominate your impo opponents you know that is not it, it it's not as important in other clubs and it is at Barca and uh, that's why that victory was was in the Super Cup in the Spanish Super Cup was, was ever so much more important than, than just the mere trophy itself and just for beating Madrid it was the how you know and, and Xavi reiterated that time and time again in, in the post-match press conference let's hear a little bit of the atmosphere let's hear what's going on in Barcelona here on uh, in this parade And the parade continues, celebrating these two titles. Arnaud Tenas, Marcos Alonso, Robert Lewandowski, and Chris Christensen. I'd say one of the unsung heroes of the uh, of the season. Yeah. He came in very quietly off of Chelsea and has provided. How, how, are you seeing the move to Lewandowski's hurry to the room? I was impressed. The one, the one? He, he gets the read, yeah, Lewandowski, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was saying about Christensen, he just provides a calm presence uh, at the back, but he's always there, timely challenges, he wins the ball back well, great anticipation, great distribution, of course, from, from the back. You think, you think he's been like, really important in the season, and he has in the games he's played. He's one of the players, he's not in the top ten of players who's played the most because he has to deal yeah. with, with injuries. injuries, but still, when Xavi has been able to put him out there, He's one of the most trusted players. Absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt about it. If in the past, um, you know, the central defender position was iffy at some point, I mean, I think with the addition of uh, Andreas Christensen, as well as, I mean, uh, Marcos Alonso, who did perform well in, in those positions, it's very good for Xavi to have these players that are, you know, so versatile and multifaceted players that they can either put in in uh, in a wing back position or a central defenders but i mean to go back to your point on, on christensen you know who would have thought you you said he came in quietly i think you know that was both in terms of the the, the way he arrived but also his demeanor is is not one of the loudest uh, players in the locker room surely not uh but he he does this it's a perfect example of a player that does his talking on the field and in that regard i mean there's just simply nothing that you can say bad about him because ha cumplido. I mean, he, he yeah, I think he, 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 he's really exceeded, uh, I'll talk for me personally, exceeded my expectations. I, I think, yeah, he came here for free and uh, you know how the press was here in Spain. They were saying like, the best one is Rudiger. Rudiger yeah. and, uh, well, the, 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 yeah. the best center bag uh, of Chelsea went to went Real to Madrid. Madrid. And then Christian didn't come here like so quietly, Thank no you, making exactly. noise. Uh, not not saying anything and 
We said yesterday, these Christians at Araujo are starting to remember to the beginnings of uh, Piqué Puyol for the character, for, for, for the way they both play on the field, uh, for, for that strength of Araujo, for, for the quality of Christensen. And, I mean, we have seen him. He has been injured uh, alongside the season, but in important games, that back was with Balde, Araujo, Christensen and Gunner. Yeah, the numbers here, he's only been uh, able to start in 19 games, to play wow. in 19 games yeah. out of 34. Mm -hmm. so he has been uh, injured, I was mentioning before that key stretch in uh, October when Kunde was out, when Araujo mm -hmm. was out, when Christensen was out, and the team really felt it. So, <laughs> that's Giraldo. Yeah. <laughs> Ingrid Engen. Dana Fernandez, Mapi León, Alexia Putellas, Marta Torrejón, Kira Walsh in the background there. Our cameraman Jordi Sanglas, always recognizable <laughs> with his cap on. <laughs> yes. And Jonathan Giralde also Ultra enjoying the moment. <laughs> Fantastic times. And we hope they get to celebrate even more in a couple of week times. Uh, we see Patrick Carro at the back of the bus there, managing to, uh, or, or, or waving the flag. Uh, our colleagues, Ernest Mendez, Carla Garcia, Maya Rostro, Cata. in the middle of the bus there. Mm -hmm. Cata Coy at the uh, front of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Seizing the moment, enjoying it. As he sat in the back, very quiet. For, very quiet for her, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were talking about Mapi Leon before. I, I imagine as he sat on Chuala, is also mm -hmm. one who uh, enjoys a good party, but, but very quiet in the, in this parade. Obviously focused on scoring goals in a couple of weeks' time in that uh, in that final. <laughs> He's like, all right, uh, can somebody take this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you throw stopping. it away? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we've been very lucky so far as well, I'd say because uh, there was um, a forecast of rain for yeah. this afternoon yeah, in Barcelona. True. but I, It was raining a little bit when I was coming here. Look at El Presidente with those moves <laughs> in the middle of the bus there. The fans yes. enjoying it in the streets. Look at him, look at him, El yes. Presidente. Let's see what he's dancing to. Oh, wow. Be careful. I started, to, I started to get worried about uh, Katakoy here. Yeah, I mean, she's just recovered from the injury of the knee. <laughs> get back in the bus, Kata. Uh, <laughs> and that's one of the other hopes of this uh, Basel women's team for the future as a goalkeeper, Katakoy. Obviously, Sandra Paños, the experienced veteran goalkeeper, still uh, the usual starter. But with uh, valid, good, valid options behind her. Gataco is in my phone. Claudia Pires is trying to join there. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. This. No. Especially not with don't try to the most guys. important game yeah, of the season the on the tree, the tree. Oh, the trees. <laughs> don't try this at home, guys. Do you think that there, 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 would, there would have been a. A discussion within the team whether to do the Rua before the final whether or whether to it's wait. two weeks before the final yeah. I say yeah. you go out you enjoy it if yeah. it's one week how many times yeah. are you going to be able to do this yeah, yeah. that's true plus you don't know how the final is going to end exactly. and if it's, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and a league must be celebrated yeah exactly well see I remember I mean I, I, I hate to bring this up but I remember four years ago they won uh, the league it was four days before the return game in, in, in Liverpool and they said, okay, we can't do the parade now because mm, obviously we've got to focus on the next game. What happened, happened. Yeah. And there was never any more celebrations. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, and I think and four years have passed yeah. since then. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's important to celebrate things in life and uh, this exactly. women team has accomplished many things. So and it's still two weeks uh, to go there to Eindhoven. They will be focused uh, like fully, so. I don't think there's any problem to show around in the parade. Xavi Hernandez celebrating his first title as a Barca coach. Robert, here's a good question for you. Barca players turned coaches. I mean, three come to mind who have won the title. This, uh, we've done this piece on, uh, on Barca TV. 
and it's five or six. Mm -hmm. You've got Xavi, you've got Lucho, you've got um, Feb. Five. You've got Cruyff. You've got one in the early um, 40s or whatever, I think. Uh -huh. I can't remember his name. Is that it? Uh, might be it, right? Uh, I could only think of those four, so if you can't think of more, I then... think it's five, and one one is from from way back when. So yeah, no, no, Chavi joining an exclusive uh, Tito club. Never, Tito never. Tito never won it. Uh, Rafa Valverde they didn't win it as a Barca player. He, he he left right before the first Pro League. So so yeah, uh, Chavi joins an uh, an exclusive club. Mm -hmm. They're definitely fans having fun. In the streets of Barcelona, the bus is bouncing. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what they're chanting. <laughs> the youngsters <laughs> trying. Trying to get Xavi's attention there, yeah. obviously. Uh, difficult. I'd say we're halfway through this uh, bus parade right now as the, uh, the buses have now turned into Balmy Street and going to head all the way down it. So they're going to ultimately go to the Arc of Triumph. Was I hearing Pedri Pedri, one of the uh, fan favourites? Pedri Pedri or <laughs> Messi, oh. Messi? Oh, OK. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> I understood Messi. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, no. Because no. we, we think Pedri. Not, not we think Messi. We think Pedri. He it? did join uh, Ronald <laughs> Elfo on Instagram Live yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on Ronald Elfo's Instagram Live. Yeah. Also, they marched on the party uh, in the club. Yeah. That's what they nice. Atacoya and Claudia Fina at the head of that. Chernogorchi, uh, we had some problems. We had some problems. Chernogorchi wants to join as well. I'm just so concerned here. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm afraid of heights, so... No. I would never do that. I, 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 no, 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 you couldn't pay me enough money yeah. to do that. <laughs> um, mm. Right. When you think of league titles, live chat as well, I want to know, what, where do you go back to? What's the first one that you can remember experiencing? Right card. First right card? In Levante? The, 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 uh, the same year we won the Champions League in Paris. Oh, so the, so the following one yeah. we won it at Balaidos, yeah. Because yeah. the, the first uh, memory I have from Barca is seeing Rivaldo, but I barely have memories from that. And then started really being a Barca fan with, uh, with Frank Reichardt, so I think it was the second one, yeah. Second Reichardt one, yeah. that would be 2006, in, uh, the year we won it in Paris. That was a weird league that we won uh, at halftime, because we depended on other results yeah. as well. I think it was Valencia that lost their game and it was a different time. So at halftime, Barcelona were champions and it was like, do we have to play the second half? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is it for you, Diego? But mine is, is, I mean, the summer of 92 was just insane. It was both for, you know, the, the dream team winning the title and the Champions League, plus the Summer Olympics here. That was, you know, it was just an explosion of uh, iconic teams and, and, and idols. Yeah kind of growing in, or, or experiencing that in front of my eyes. Obviously, I, it wasn't, I wasn't here to witness it. I, I was living in Holland at the time, but it was always uh, summers here with the family of Barcelona and then coming down here and um, trying to soak up as much uh, memorabilia and, and, and uh, stories from my grandfather that took days to finish. It was mon epic monologues from... Uh, that uh, you know he would kind of break down how the season went but that was for me sort of uh, my yeah the first big memory that I have in particular of course the the Copa de Europa as it was the, the European Cup it was as it was called then as well falling in the same season uh, I mean just a wonderful wonderful memory that live chat let us know what your first memory of a Barca league title is I have to go two years after you Diego 94 mm. 94 94 yeah. the last uh, Cruyff league as, uh, as yeah. a coach last day of the season as as they did it yeah 
throughout uh, Cruyff's tenure. Uh, Barca played Sevilla at the Spotify, uh, well, no, not Spotify Camp Nou then, at the, at the uh, Camp Nou, and were dependent on Deportivo's result right. at home against Valencia. Deportivo couldn't win if Deportivo won they were the champions. It was nil, 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 nil. Barca were winning their game comfortably against Sevilla at uh, Camp Nou. All of a sudden, 43rd minute in the second half, Deportivo get a penalty in their favour. And then famously, Jukic misses it. Gonzalez, the Valencia keeper, saves it. Barca win the league, absolute pandemonium at the uh, Camp Nou. Four titles in a row for Johan Cruyff. And I, that's the first memory I have memory, of Barca yeah. winning a league, watching that at home as, as a five-year-old. But you, I mean, you got to live that up close and personal. That, that's, that's uh, you know, so unique. That's so, I'm going to say you're so privileged. Yeah, because but, living but, it from a distance, was it was odd. You try to live it, but it's obviously not the same as you're living it here. And, uh, and, and I, I, sometimes I think I... I I just wish I would I would have been born like three years earlier because yeah. then I would have seen all four of Christ all four, leagues, yeah, yeah, which yeah. obviously then with time I've learned about, but I, I, didn't, uh, I, I wasn't aware of them in the moment. Uh, the first one, as I say, is the, is the 94 one yeah. with that team with Romario, with yeah. uh, Stoichkov, with Laudrup, with yeah, exactly. Kuhlman, all of the uh, all of the icons. Uh, for, for me, it's like uh, this weekend I had some Dutch friends all over the city and, and around here. And, and <laughs> We're was, everywhere. Uh, yeah, and, uh, all over. <laughs> and the girlfriend of my friend was asking me, like, why did you become a sport journalist? And I was like, I don't know. And then she said me something that made me realize it's true. If Barca wouldn't have won that much, and Barca, Pep Guardiola's Barca wouldn't have existed, and, mm. and all that, I would probably not be here, like sitting with you guys, because I think that is what made me like, where it's like, okay, I'm not, I cannot play football, so I want to be there celebrating and explaining that. Uh, and it was because I could watch uh, Reichardt's uh, Barca, and I could enjoy that the Barca team mm. uh, of Guardiola. Those were very enjoyable teams. Yeah. Those where very where enjoyable. do you rank Louis van Gaal's league wins? With they, they, after they, they, it is weird, isn't it? Because he has a tough job. Yeah. Because there's still all the, this emotional connection to the to the Cruyff teams, and, and Ronaldo all of a just sudden, in, in 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 three years, the team had changed so much. Super much. So yeah. much. You brought in Rivaldo, Giovanni Silva. You brought in uh, the beginning of the Dutch players as well. Figo um, breaking out. Figo breaking out as well. Uh, you got you got Luis Enrique in there as well, uh, and those were were great titles. I think fans were so used to the Cruyff style mm. that they didn't enjoy the Van Hal style as much. But ultimately, I, I remember those leagues very fondly because I was ten years old back then, yeah. and um, so it was Barca success regardless. Really? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I do remember there was more debate on on like what we, what we still do to this the day, style, like the how yeah. and all that. Yeah. It's great that you were winning, but yeah. which is surprising, seeing as he came from such a successful and young Ajax side that was, you know, very. He was very stubborn, well, though, wasn't he? Very, very stubborn. stubborn. Very stubborn. Yeah, there's a great documentary about him uh, now, and uh, have you seen this conversation with the De Boer brothers? They're all driving in the same car, and the, the De Boer brothers are like arguing with him. Well, yeah, but sometimes we're too stubborn, and oh, he's really? like, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I have to see that. Yeah, Which no, no, documentary is great content? Where is it? Is it on? Uh, I think it's one of the on one of the, uh, the the streaming services here. Okay, okay. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find out see later. That. <laughs> it's a great conversation. But obviously, Van Hal, uh, apart from the titles he won here, gets credit for being the coach who brought Carlos Puyol into the first team, who sure. brought Xavi Hernandez yeah. into the first team, who brought Andres Iniesta. Iniesta in the first team, Victor Valdez. Uh, just for that, you have to go down as one of the best coaches in club history. Yeah, 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 Those yeah. four players yeah, that yeah. he allowed to uh, make their debut. And, uh, up, yeah. and in that term, I think like fans might might think bad of of the period of uh, Kuman as uh, mm. as a coach here mm. in Barca because he didn't accomplish what what the Barca team is used to, like winning titles. But he was the one bringing uh, Gabi there. Yeah, yeah. And he kept Pedri yeah. and he decided to keep Pedri. Yeah, yeah. no, for sure, for sure. There I always wonder there. How, how, again, it's, uh, sorry, Robert, it's just from, it's it's different, obviously, experiencing from far away. This was, you know, the, the, the early mid through late 90s where uh, eventually internet became a thing. But uh, before that, it was uh, literally uh, newspaper snippets that my grandfather would send me. So the news would get uh, to Holland so much later. But what was that like, the transition from, 
original Ronaldo Nazario, you know, leaving Oof, the party and then summer. Rivaldo tough coming summer. in. Yeah. Tough summer, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just a little bit too young to remember. I, I just, yeah. as a kid, could not understand how we'd signed this fantastic player, 18 years of age, who yeah. scored 47 goals in uh, in a single season in all competitions, 34 in La Liga, and all of a sudden, oh, wait, what? He's not here anymore? He's not here anymore, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, those were tough times, but Rivaldo did a great job coming in, yeah. earning the, the, really the love of the fans, uh, making an instantaneous impact. I was at that first game of the uh, Van Hal tenure at the uh, Camp Nou, a 3 0 win against Real Sociedad. Rivaldo comes in, scores two goals, a free kick, all of a sudden, oh, Ronaldo, who? <laughs> <laughs> This is good. This is the guy. This is Rivaldo. Guy, yeah. So yeah, um, oh, that, that that did help. The yeah. fact that Rivaldo came in immediately after. Yeah, it, it was great. And you've got, you've got great players, like great characters like Luis Enrique, for example, who were fan <laughs> favourites. Let's focus on on, on, on on this year's team because I feel like we haven't uh, talked about uh, all players uh, as we were seeing. Kessier Koundé. Good segue into going back to what we were saying about the new signings. I mentioned the impact of. Lewandowski, you've got Koundé, Christensen, Marcos Alonso, three players who have had minutes in defence and who are credited for this, how solid Barca have been at the back this season. Yeah, um, definitely. It's We already knew the powerhouse that was Koundé when he was over at Sevilla. I, you know, the whole summer affair, uh, I was... You know, I'm not a religious person, I'll be honest, but I was praying to the gods, the that hoping that Koundé would come to uh, Barca and not sign uh, with the other club that he was linked with at the time, as were so many other players for that matter. Right. And, and uh, also, uh, once he got here, those three games in which, can, can we register him, can we not? Yes, and then, and then yes. he comes in, finally, exactly. uh, gets to play. And then the, the whole thing about, well, we all know he's a centre-back, but he spent most of the season playing as a right-back at yeah. a very, very high level. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And in a position where we've, we're, 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 we've been thin in. Um, and again, a position that he had massive boots to fill and shoes to fill in that regard. And uh, he did so without ever complaining never a peep uh, you know we all know what his favorite position is uh, Xavi knows it very well as well he's very vocal about that in that regard but uh, he gets the job done and he does so without any complaining or bad faces and, and, and he's very good as well it's, it's great to have this this type of versatility amongst uh, so many players and, and in particular in the back line of course where you know it's we're so deep there now it's such a luxury almost to to be naming these names and and think of uh, the the players that Xavi has at his disposal to make up the the Barca defense yeah and also the feeling like you think on okay we have Faraujo we have Kunde, we have Christensen like the, the, that's a wall There's, they are not going to pass over here you know also that feeling of security that the fans have so imagine Mark and Ter Stegen feeling safe there yep. and also the rest of the team like if you have a defense like this also the midfielders feel more relaxed to be playing the ball and everything because they know if they lose that ball they, they have Araujo they have Kunde, and they have Christensen back there taking into account everything that we're talking about I'll ask the live chat, I'll ask you guys as well. I'd like to get the live chat in, in, involved because there's lots of love coming uh, towards uh, or coming to the team's way. But I'd like them to interact with us a little bit. What, which has been the most impactful signing? So we've got Kunde, Christensen, Kessier, Lewandowski, Rafinha, Marcos. Out of those six, who came last summer. You had Bellerin as well, but he didn't end the season. Who was the most impactful signing? It's easy to say Lewandowski because of the goals. It's almost like, I mean, no, he's in a class of himself, I would say, maybe. I would say, no. Are we going to, are we going to, um, like, Le so, in terms who was of the most impactful barring Lewandowski? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say so. In terms of goal, it's Lewandowski, but I said before, like, for me, the, the best signing of this summer was Christensen. I, I, I think you, you can make an argument for Andrews Christensen. Like, because he he came like everyone, like, why do we need to sign Christensen? He's not good enough to play here at Barcelona. Like, all the words were around that, you know? And he came here, no noise, no nothing. Uh, and he became, like, an essential part of that bug we were talking about. Like, you have considered only 13 goals in, in the whole league. And that's not only because of Ter Stegen, that's also about the, the, uh, that the back defense you have. And Christensen is part of that. I agree, but... Levy, 
obviously strong in numbers, and we talked about the veteran leadership. Also a case to be made for Rafinha. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's that tough moment in the season. Well, let's go back to the beginning. Xavi starts the season playing the two wingers, mm -hmm. Rafinha and uh, Dembélé. That was his idea. He wanted to play with two wide players there. As Your the games wingers, go yeah. by, he feels that it doesn't work well enough. I think the Clásico at the Bernabeu is a turning point in that sense, and we hardly ever see that again, Rafinha and Dembélé in the same positions. And that means that now the wing spot is the right wing spot, and it's one or the other. And sometimes Dembélé gets more minutes than Rafinha, and you see the frustration mm -hmm. there. And we've seen moments of frustration with Rafinha, who th who's then gone and, and apologised. But then he's also come through with the goal against Osasuna. Big time. He came through with the goal against Valencia, 1-0 win. The goal in San Mamés, 1-0 win. The assist for Lewandowski at Mestalla, that cross uh, in the 93rd minute. Beautiful delivery. Just so many key moments. He scores the opener in that game we were uh, referencing before against uh, Real Betis. So if you go back to these games that have been won by fine margins, Rafinha's had a huge impact in them. Mm -hmm. And in and, and, and that regard as well, I mean, him coming in, knowing the competition that he had to face within the squad, I mean, we all knew who was going to be Barca's number nine and the standout striker of this team. And Robert Lewandowski knew that as well. But Rafinha, in that sense, he had a much bigger of a challenge ahead of him signing for Barca. Eventually, of course, the club that he wanted to sign for desperately, given uh, all of his memories and uh, with his father as a musician, with Ronaldinho, etc. But uh, so, so it was truly a dream come true for Rafinha to come to this club. But he, he had a big challenge ahead of him uh, to, to fight his way to become a consistent starter and be chosen amongst the starting 11 for, for Xavi Hernandez. And uh, as you mentioned in particular, Robert, when, when you said when, when Xavi kept talking about, I want pure wingers, pure wingers, that scheme changed. And uh, OK, we can talk about that he had some, uh, what would you call it? Uh, I don't, I don't want to say luck because it wasn't lucky for Dembele to get a long-term injury. Yeah. But in, in, in Rafinha's case, of course, that played um, into his favor to become that consistent uh, winger on on the right and and man like uh, yeah and then there's also that key moment in the season in which Xavi tries out I believe it's at the Fibitas against Atletico Madrid tries out the Busquets de Jong Pedri Gavi mm. and he just found gold there yeah, but I would say the, the most important uh, thing that Rafinha has accomplished this season is like in the moment Dembélé gets injured, he, he does a step on, mm. you know, he, he does a step in, into the front and say, OK, Dembélé is not here, I'm going to take the responsibility mm. uh, to be that guy that scores because the best moment of Rafinha also came with probably the worst moment of Lewandowski. Lewandowski was good not point. scoring, yeah. uh, Dembélé was not there point. because he was the injured and Rafinha was the one scoring, the one putting yeah. the crosses, the, the one bringing the team uh, in that uh, Putting attack. the team on yeah. his back in the attack, surely, mm. surely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And we don't, I mean, at least in the press, uh, it doesn't get highlighted or talked about enough, the importance and impact of Rafinha uh, on this team, I would say. And, and it's, it's definitely something that he look for himself i mean you, you talked about this this uh frustration when he gets, gets substituted javi said himself you know i want to see that that's a good sign yeah the atmosphere in barcelona is absolutely incredible quarter past eight local time here the parade goes on there's still a way to go let's listen to what's going on Standing tall. We've seen so many debutants as well this season, yeah. haven't we? I mean, uh, in that regard, from both not just Barça Athletic but the under 19 squad, there's so much talent coming up. And we saw a glimpse of uh, 
maybe the name at least well it, it hurts of course of course for La Nina Mal yeah and, and Vicky Lopez of course for the women's team okay. youth on both teams on the men's team and the uh, women's team you mentioned the uh, the debut Diego uh, that is um Chadi Riyad had some minutes Riyad, against uh, yeah. Osasuna. You got uh, Marc Casado played in the Champions League against Victoria Pilsen. Alarcón got minutes in four different games. Alice Garrido played in Elche. And then, of course, the one Estani? That, that, that everyone... Estani was last season. Last season. Estani's yeah. Estani got the call-up um, uh, this season but didn't play. The one we were all excited about is 15-year-old prospect, La Mina Mal. Making an uh, impact. We'd, heard, we'd all had great things about. We've seen him play, but you think, I mean, it's a 15 year old playing against grown men. I mean, how's this going to go? And, he comes uh, on against Betis, almost scores, almost, almost scores. assists. Yeah, yeah. And it was the feeling like this kid has something different, you know? Like, I remember, like, after that day, my dad called and like, that pass only is made by Messi. Like, I've yeah. never seen that before, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he's 15 years old, they're in Spotify Camino, which a normal person, adult person would be nervous, another teenager would be nervous, and he was not nervous at all. He was just performing at, uh, as he has done in La Masia. If, if you remember the, the action, the, the Lamin almost assisted to Dembele, you know what that action reminds me of? It's the 6-1 against PSG. Yeah. It's the Neymar ball through to Sergio yeah. Roberto. Obviously, the finish wasn't yeah. it wasn't there no. because Dembélé tries to bring it down mm. and then and then kind of fumbles it. But if Dembélé goes first touch and that goes in, it's it's, it's, a, it's, it's same similar. situation. It's, similar. it's a similar delivery from uh, from Lamine Yamal to the one that uh, Neymar did. Good point. At that yeah, day. I think there were many debutants this uh, season, also in the women's team with Lucia Corrales and everything. But if we look back in both teams and we think in the future, in the big star, we are all looking for uh, seeing and winning many titles and also individual titles. We go on Lamine Yamal and yeah. also on Vicky Lopez, and they're yeah. 15 and 16 years it's, old. Yeah. I know they are both. Uh, also friends and we need to go to Bruno Balleste who's uh, following this parade on foot Bruno how are we doing yes hey guys well here we're here live with the bus of the first squad there you see all the first team players we are now in uh, Carre Valmes it's absolutely crazy because there is full of people we are approaching now to Plaza Catalunya and uh, they are telling us also uh, the police officers that is absolutely collapsed the city center of uh, Barcelona the players are enjoying uh, signing shirts when the fans are throwing them from here from the from the streets uh, the music there uh, there is a fantastic atmosphere and let me see if we can find here some fans Demo ver aquí cómo está la están aquí una cosita pasado están aquí Son unas máquinas, tira, no, 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 tranquilo. Quiero uh, uh, really emocionar a todos los fans, decir uh, hello to the players, it's absolutely full. Uh, primera rueda que ven? Um, no, de petita bien vingut mal. When she was young, she was coming to Paris. No, siempre, no, no, en catalán, catalán. Pero no, siempre nos han portado a los pares, nos portan la tradición, siempre ven andines y siempre los portan a dins. The fans feeling the colors, well, thank you very much. And here now you can see the women's team that of course are also enjoying this parade and uh, it's incredible the the atmosphere here and now Aitana the fans absolutely crazy with Aitana that is here taking the picture with with the fan uh, and let me see uh, if also we can have here some reaction it's more fun than fun money more more fun <laughs> Basically, he came to see the women's team and not the men's, but now he's from both teams. And now here, in this... Come on. Es que es la millor, es la Cherno Gorti, es la millor. The best one, Cherno Gorti, it's really well. He's a yeah. catalana, la més catalana. The most catalan, well. Thank you very much, muchas gracias. Uh, guys, absolutely crazy here, the atmosphere of the parade, the men's, the women's, and the fans that they want to watch absolutely everything. Thank you very much, Bruno. I mean, I was feeling the energy there because we're sitting here comfortably on these couches, Diego. <laughs> a whole different thing, for, a whole different experience for uh, Bruno, surrounded by these fans, uh, youngsters, uh, the, uh, the older generations as well, out in the streets. It's just beautiful to see. And the whole, I mean, we said Plata Catalunya has collapsed right yeah. now. It's just 
it'll be interesting to see when the once the bus pulls up there how it'll make its way around but i'm expecting just to see more seas of people uh, and as we talked about at the beginning i mean we're, we're hungry for a moment like this to be able to celebrate it collectively with in this case both the men's and the women's team of course uh, a beautiful way to uh, put a the cherry on top of, of just a very successful and memorable season and i i, I can't i mean you know i was uh, i asked the both of you earlier where would you place the importance of this title and uh, you know i think the only i mean the one that has the strongest case at least from the, the league titles that i uh witnessed that can compare to this is you know the say the Ronaldinho van Rijkaard uh, league title during that era um, and bringing a smile back to all the Barca fans and to the you know Goulet community. Sim sim yeah. Similar situations yeah. uh, that was after a five-year drought this one's four years uh, both in the second season of Juan Laporta right. as uh, yeah, president. Sure. There, there are so many parallels to be drawn there because I mean you've got Obviously Maybe Johan Scrive also when he came here after the big role. But yeah, uh, I, I would say those are good examples. The 1991 uh, um, first Cruyff League, the first right card one as well. After times of struggles, this is this is comparable to them. And, and just to, to compare the, the 05 and this uh, league, there are so many comparisons second Laporta um, season a, a coach that uh, it gives a new identity to the team mm -hmm. uh, right card Xavi Xavi played for right card mm -hmm. uh, you bring in a quality striker who gives you the the, the, the firepower that you didn't have the previous season and then it was San Reto. this this time it's Robert Lewandowski you have painful Champions League exits in both of them as well mm -hmm. because if you go back to that we didn't get knocked out in the group stage but it was immediately after against Chelsea uh, yeah. and, and and you get knocked out then, then you um, this season you do. So, I mean, if, if, if we're drawing parallels, next season could be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> we really dance the same way. <laughs> Let's hope so. I, mean, I, I think it's not only the title, like like the league, indeed. It's like bringing back the joy to Barcelona fans, as yeah. Ronaldinho did, and as this team has done this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark andre to stay in, waving to the fans. Marcos Alonso with the scarf wrapped around his head. Next to Eric Garcia, Iñaki Peña as well. Ferran Torres in the background. For so many of them, this is the first league title. I, I, I actually have... So, players who had already won a, a league title with Barca out of this squad, how many would you think there are? It's easier to start that way than the other. Four, five, Busi, Jordi Alba, Sergio Roberto. First second. Ter Stegen for three more, right? There is only one more. There's five in total. Five in total. Uh, think of the Valverde years. The what, sir? The of the Valverde mm -hmm. season. Ah. Okay, are we started. counting Piquet? Is Piquet part no, of no. this? Uh, oh, yeah, oh. Technically six. Technically six. Okay. Because okay. uh, Piquet, Piquet has won this uh, Technically, Piquet is yeah. a champion. He's mm. playing yeah. in, the, in mm -hmm. this league. Yeah. Usman Dembélé is the, the fifth oh. remaining. Yeah, Usman yeah, Dembélé. So there are five yeah, so. that have won it. Yeah. There are players who had won it with other teams. So Lewandowski with Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich. Ferran Torres and Eric Garcia won it with Manchester City. Christensen and Marcos Alonso with uh, Chelsea. Kessier obviously famously with um, with AC Milan last season, being their top scorer. Um, Frankie De Jong had Was won he? it with Ajax as well. Yeah. And. But there are so many who would never won a, a league title, mostly because they're young as well. We've got Araujo, Pedri, Ansu Fati, Iñaki Peña, Rafinha, Koundé, Balde, Pablo Torre, Arnau Tenas. They've never won a league title. So this, for them, is such a special moment. I left out Gavi, sorry. Gavi. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. I mean, I don't know how many of them would have won things with, uh, you know, their youth squads, of course. But, uh, I mean, winning it with the Barca first team, for so many of that you just mentioned, the Pedris, the Gavis, the Ansus, I mean, this has been on their bucket list for 
and, and the reason why they started playing football since they were kids. So, again, I, you know, I hope that this will inspire them and be a trampoline for more and I want to say bigger and better things to come. Um, you know, I, I, of course, the, the Spina you can, Cavada. You can only feel that way, can't you? Yeah. 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 This is the, it feels like this is the beginning of something big. Yeah. Obviously. They after, are so young, like we forget, like they are teenagers. Like, how is Gabi? 18. 18. He turned 18. 19. Pedri's 20. It's, it's incredible. Are, 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 what, what is the, what would the, I mean, I feel like, you know, all the big teams that, that won important trophies have been dubbed some sort of nickname, right? You have the dream team, you had pep team. Baby team. Would this be the, 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 the team dream team? Well, I mean, team, are, dream, team, team, team dream. Well, <laughs> so wait a minute. We have, we have a, a couple of names that this has already begun. So wait a minute. Let's listen to this first and I'll think about what I'm about to say. Nice. Campeones, campeones with those fans who have just flooded the streets of Barcelona. Waving their flags, waving their scarves, wearing their Blaugrana shirts. Led by Canaletas. Levy with the dance moves. Via la Etana, I don't know. Via Levy. He's feeling it now. He was saving it. No, but Levy has many TikToks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. No, no. I'm saying he was saving yeah. his energy. Now he's getting <laughs> into the group. Yeah, they worked so hard throughout the season. Let them have their fun. In this joyous afternoon in, in Barcelona. Redeemed team. We're talking team. about how, how we should name this team. So obviously... Right. Uh, there was this moment last season in which Evi said that we need all need to board the Chavineta. Yes. Yeah. So Ch like the Chavineta is definitely still going, still working. 100%. Fifth gear right now. You had the dream team. Dream team. Dream team, yeah. yeah. Although, uh, gradually graduating out of the, their teenage years, all of these, <laughs> uh, all, all of these players. And uh, Redeem yeah. team? I don't know. Well, Redeem team, I don't know. Could be. I'm not sure we have a name for them. The, 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 the Chavineta is definitely yeah. like still Chavineta. operational. Though. Yes, yes, yes. We're all on board. Right. Back to Bruno. Bruno, tell us all about it. Well, and now, yeah, guys, the buses are blocked here because we are entering to Plaza Catalonia, to the city, city center of uh, Barcelona. Here we have some uh, Barca fans, hello. Yeah, a lot of fans. Very Barca. funny. Where are you from? We're from Sweden. And uh, you were expecting this uh, parade yeah. or it was a surprise oh, to find it here? Surprise. It was so fun. Well, thank you very much. Well, now we have to continue uh, walking uh, because now, yes, the buses can continue in there. Uh, it's absolutely crazy, guys, now, yes. We are entering in Plaza Catalunya. We have the players that are dancing a lot, especially Lewandowski, one of the big stars of this team, of this league. 21 goals and, well, with more rhythm now, walking here in the streets of Barcelona. It's incredible to see this atmosphere. Uh, you are experiencing it also uh, with the international sign now. Uh, everyone crazy to see this celebration of FC Barcelona winning the league. Fantastic, Bruno, getting the vibe of... Uh how the fans are feeling there, obviously, the, uh, the Catalans, the citizens of Barcelona, also the tourists being able to enjoy this, this joyous afternoon in Barcelona, celebrating the men's and the women's league title. This has only happened three times, you were mentioning, Irati, yeah. in club history, that both teams have won their respective leagues, Barca men's team managed to do it yesterday in their derby against Espanyol. Fantastic performance as we see there. As Bruno was saying, how the buses are approaching Plaza Catalunya, the city centre. Uh, it will be long until they reach Arde Triomphe. 
I, I was uh, in a normal place. Maybe you were saying we, we had a shot in Plaza Catalunya a while ago. I thought, yeah, we, I think I thought we they just gone through. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, obviously, I was wrong there. There's still a while to, while to go again uh, to get to Arde Triomphe. I'd say at least another hour, right? Yeah, because in uh, normal pace, walking can be 30 minutes by oh. car, 10 minutes, but at this pace, I would say another hour. Well, there's the aerial shot of the city of Barcelona and those buses making progress as they make their way to the center of Catalonia's capital, Plaza Catalunya, a place where I'm sure many of our fans here on the live chat uh, have been if they visited Barcelona. Like, do the exercise, live chat, raise your hand with the, the the hand emoji if you have been to Barcelona and you visited Plaza Catalunya, if you visited the Spotify Camp. Now I want to see lots of raised hands here on the uh, live chat. I imagine I mean, we've got lots of people watching us right now. Uh, many of them will have been to Barcelona visiting, maybe getting the opportunity to go to the Spotify Camp now. And they are starting to come in to the live chat. Yazin Adoy Salim raising a hand. Muzar Nim raising a hand as well. Leonid Barça saying, Rune Hanse saying, I've been there as well. Dana Aguida says, I wish. <laughs> FBNX raising their hand. Saki Peter as well. Aram Saad. Amin Al Yashu as well. Lots of raised hands. Lots of our fans have been to our lovely city. Of Barcelona, which is especially nice this time of the year as well, it's, it's, as we start to yeah, the summer. The summer, Amazing. the vibe of the city, many tourists. The vibe, singing Un Dia de Partid. Celebrate, yeah. and I guess they went there even though the score is not that really a score right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, but you still have that one uh, to cross off of your list of yeah, things to do. Huh? And, and Arrua, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say you could have gone yesterday, but you were here, of course. I was here. <laughs> I, I was going to join, but it was like one we ended here. You know, it's like maybe it's too late, and then I have to sleep, work today. I was like, I just passed. <laughs> So mature, yeah. so responsible. <laughs> Look at that! I, it feels it burned out now with all the many people, the party. Yeah, well, it, it seems like it's peaking now. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely the most lively that we've seen. They were the saving players. energies for the center. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nice aerial, aerial shot there. I, and I've seen because they have some friends waiting in Arde Triomphe. They sent me pictures and it's already full of people Ayan? there in Arde Triomphe. Yeah. All right. They were asking me, like, where are they now? Like, we've been waiting here <laughs> for an hour. I was like, well, maybe I have to wait another hour <laughs> until they get there. Another hour at least to go before the bus, the two buses, we should say, slowly advance from now the city center of Plata Catalunya to the Arc de Triomphe. And I wonder if there are going to be some speeches there in other yeah. time, because it feels there's no Arua without speeches, right? I know, I know, <laughs> for sure. I mean, there must be a microphone that gets passed around. Do they, ask your friends if they, there's a podium, uh, a stage like set up. There is a little stage. I oh, saw this is. morning because I came across with Aretio. Okay. But 
And what about you, Robert? Have you ever attended a Rua? I have. In fact, the one we were referencing, the 2012-2013 uh, oh. one, when they uh, became champions and the women's team was there as well. They'd won uh, their title. Fantastic atmosphere, of course, in uh, in Barcelona. It's very difficult to move. Once, like, you have to pick your spot. Once once you're there, you see them pass. It's like the Reyes like, Magos, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the King's Parade. The, King's Parade. the, the three wise men. Uh, I also went when I was a student to Canaletas when we won the right card leagues mm. and the Champions League mm -hmm. and I also went I think I was still a university student uh, in the first Pep season when we won the treble the celebration at the uh, at the Camp Nou that one was oh, nice that one was amazing just it was I would say 2009 was the best time of my life <laughs> <laughs> Barca was doing well, I was still studying, having fun in Barcelona. I was, I was, was here easier, on Barca TV right? doing my, like, like, my, my work experience for university. Wow, okay. uh, I, was, I was a big adio here. Yeah. Uh, and it was just so much fun. Just so much fun. Great I, time to start. 2009. Sure. Yeah. Golden time. Golden times, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Día de partido. Look at that. Catalonia with uh, Alejandro Valde and Ansu Fati. Tell your friends to, to yeah, sit to tight. They're, they're, they're going to be a while. I have friends waiting on the and they ask me, where are they? <laughs> yep, they're going to be a while. It's going to take a while. Now the bus is making a move here. As they try to get out of Plaza Catalonia, but look, I mean, this, this just gives you perspective. This yeah. aerial shot, it's one of the most famous squares in Barcelona. All the focus of everyone is uh, has drifted towards that right-hand side. There's barely anyone on, on the other <laughs> side. Nothing, yeah. Yeah. The bus is uh, going to head down to the Arc of Triumph after leaving this uh, Plaza Catalunya land. Obviously, from Barcelona, different spots in Catalonia, I bet, as well. Some tourists as well. We did this before. Yeah. I want to know the live chat. Where are you watching us from, live chat? Let us know. Countries, flags on uh, on this uh, live chat. Good YouTube bounce. on Facebook. Let us know. Where are you from? Where are you supporting Barca from? Where is the Barca love coming from? It's amazing right oh, now. he has got some serious <laughs> bounce, yeah. following Imagine as a tourist you came across with this. Look, 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 look. Yeah. All the countries coming in. We've got Jorge Molina from the USA. I've got Fossi from Romania. Darges from India. Cyclist Gaming from Dubai. Mohamed Wales says from Egypt. Big Jimmy Yogurt says <laughs> uh, Sweden. Daniel Kurdistan. Uh, Chris Sprinkle from DC. Dizzy from Kosovo. Shank the Tank from Jordan, uh, where, where, where else where are we? We've got Vietnam, we've got Slovenia, Poland, India, Austria, England, Romania, South Africa, Bulgaria, Florida, Chicago, USA. Shout out to Spence, of course, um, oh, yeah. he's not with us today. He's off on vacation. He, he thought, look, uh, I'm going to give it until the Espanol game. They're going to win the league then, <laughs> and then I'm off on vacation. Got people watching from South Africa, Egypt, Jamaica, Poland, Germany, India, uh, Iraq as well, Belgium. Thank you guys. Thank you for all the Blaugrana support from all around the world. Can't read them all out. As we see the bus leaving Plaza Catalunya with our first team heroes, with our champions who got the job done. 
the first opportunity. Yeah, first, that's right. The first match ball was against Espanyol. They said, look, right. we don't want this to go on for any longer. We get it done now with four games to spare. And there we are, 2022-23 La Liga champions. And right behind them are the other champions, the women's team, who got it done a couple of weeks back now. What was it? Uh, last week yeah. or two weeks ago? Two weeks, weeks. ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Which is also important to mention, Carolyn Graham Hansen is not there in the bus because she was not feeling good and she oh. decided to rest a little bit good, and get ready for end of it. Rest <laughs> up, rest uh, up. We need her to rest up. It's such a shame though. Yeah. One of the uh, key players in that squad, but we do need her feeling healthy and rested for that final in two weeks in Eindhoven. That's right. This is, there's a, the, Let's hope that the, the women's Ruauer party is... Uh, to be continued one with yeah. exactly. uh, Caroline Graham Hansen joining the, the squad after winning the Champions League final. And on the men's bus, well, I mean, I, I continue to think one of the most active is Xavi Hernandez. Look at yeah. him. He, <laughs> I mean, he said yesterday it, it has not been an easy season for them with all the critics, all what the, the, the expectations that were created when he came here, all uh, those people comparing him to Pep Guardiola. And, it was not really easy. It has been a super difficult season for him. So I think that he and the whole staff, they, they feel relief right now. Seriously. And, and but also, I mean, I, I don't want to like, understate this. A manager that prior to coming to the biggest club in the world had only experienced coaching a side in, in Qatar, you know? I mean, this it's, 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 it, it's huge. It's like... Being being captain of a ship it's, and saying, "Here's the Titanic." Go. It's one of the toughest assignments <laughs> you know, in the world, I would say, and obviously, every club will think the same. But for those of us who've grown up and live here, you know that it's not just about coaching a football team. Exactly, there's so much more than that. There's so much. There's hours and hours of television, radio, Twitch, Twitter debate that surrounds the Barca coaching position with, an, a clear, with the controversy, I'd say, or div division of opinions there is here in regarding the style. Mm. Because there are those firm believers in the style, like Xavi Hernandez, others that would just want to, look, I want to see my team win, that's it. I don't care how, it, how it's done. So there's so much discourse around how the team is managed that it's not about just about getting the three points. It's about yeah. it's about a, a lot more. And Xavi took on the, the responsibility, and I think he felt relieved yesterday. Right, uh, let's go back to uh, Bruno Ballester. Bruno. Yes, Robert, guys. Uh, we are now in Fontanella Street. We are 800 meters away from our final destination, that is Arc de Triomphe. Has been uh, absolutely madness what we have experienced in uh, Plaza Catalunya, really in the Canaletas, uh, La Fonda Canaletas, where Barcelona celebrates the trophies. And here you can see now in this final part uh, of this uh, well, journey that has started at the Spotify Camp Nou, that is going to end in Arc de Triomphe. The streets you can see that are absolutely full uh, around the city. Some fans that they just stay um, in one place, other ones that they continue uh, the whole, whole trip. Uh, here also on the left, there you see the Via La Etana, one big, big street and also absolutely full of people. So the passion for Barca continues at the city of Barcelona with the men's and the women's team. Thank you very much, uh, Bruno. Indeed, you can feel the passion just by seeing the images of the fans, the players, Bruno Villamala <laughs> bouncing there. One of the great things about this season for the women's team has been the return of players who've been out for so long, like Alexia Putellas, like Bruno Villamala, like Jana Fernandez, like Cata, like Cata yeah. They've suffered such severe injuries and now they're all healthy for this end of the season. I think it's perfect because in both ways, in the men's and the women's team, the season ends with all the players recover, you know. Like, uh, there's a little bit like injury on uh, Lucy Bronze and uh, Rofo, but it seems that they are going to win that final in Eindhoven. And, and the best is not only winning titles, but also recovering that. And especially in women's football, where we have seen this season, not only Barca, but in uh, many important teams, many 
uh, football is breaking the ACLs, uh, all that injury on the knee that is really hard to, to recover from mentally and both physically and and seeing also those youngsters with uh, ja, uh, with Kata, with Jana, with uh, Bruna Vilamala that are the future of this Barca recovery bouncing back and also being able to celebrate right now. And there they are. And that bus being escorted by the police of course and uh, the fans as they make their way to the Arc of Triumph in Barcelona. It's uh, about quarter to nine local time here in Barcelona in the evening. Still light. It's been fortunate there's been no rain on this parade. It can stop raining as soon as the still. <laughs> yeah. And I'd say we've got at least another 45 minutes going of this uh, celebration in the streets of it's Barcelona. Still in Okinawa, no? This celebration of the two league titles, men and women's, is all inclusive parade. Let's listen to the atmosphere. These are moments that uh, these players, this staff, will never forget. I mean, the admiration that they must be feeling right now, because we've seen with the people talking to Bruno. No, no, I'm saying, I'm, no, no, I'm here for the women's team. They're my team. I'm, I'm here to see uh, Alexia Putellas. I'm here to see Ana Cernogorcevic. I'm here to see Aitana Bombati. I'm here to see these new idols that uh, year after year, with all the success they've gained, with all the traction they've gained, obviously, and um, more visibility in, in the media as well. They've now become icons here in Barcelona. And they have to, uh, and they had to work harder th than the men. And it's like this, and not it's, it's not because the club invested in them, but how the society was built with uh, women's football not being nothing in our society. Uh, and uh, they have broke all all those boundaries, you know. And uh, and it's amazing. I was watching now uh, Alexia's Instagram, and she has been posting some pictures from from the parade and some balconies that were like with a lot of message for the women's team, you know. And I think it's really special for them like uh, because many of them like maybe the youngsters they already thought okay I can be footballer but I can think on on Irene Paredes on Alexia Putellas on Mapi Leon or, or on those ones that are the, the veterans here and Sandra they, Paños, yeah, they, Rejon, yeah. they never uh, thought like okay I can be a professional player and now they are leaving all this and I, I think it's it's over her, their expectations I do envy them for what they're experiencing right now and for the slices of pizza that are being shared. I was going to say, that, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say Robert, a little bit peckish you, here. Yeah. You remember the good old days of Barca Live where we had pizza and nah, popcorn? True, true. Yeah, no, there's no pizza in here today. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Jan Givas on the, the live chat says, hey, I'm here to see Mapi Leon. There we go. We've seen a little bit of her. Seen a little bit. We've seen more of others. Mapi's been kind of quiet in this celebration. We've, yeah, we've seen a lot before. of Alexia. Um, seen a lot of uh, Jana. Alexia, Jana. We've seen Bruna Villamana. We've seen Mariona Caldente. Uh, I can see Lucy Bronze in the background as well. Also Gemma. Yeah, Alexia's mm. been one of the quiet ones. Uh, Fridolina Rolfo the, uh, in, in the background before as well. But ultimately, just enjoying Muria themselves. Rabano, they're in the middle with the flag. Yeah, press officer Jordi Clos there. At the, uh, at the head of the bus. With Sandra Paños, Bruna Vilamala. These players that we insist are going to compete for the Champions League in two weeks in Eindhoven. What do you think? What do you guys think if you're Jonathan Giraldez? You have Alexia Putellas back with the squad. Obviously, she comes in uh, to get some minutes in, in these recent games. But for the Champions League final, the best player in the world, are you, are you are you not tempt, are you not tempted to start her? At, at I don't think she's going to start no. because we have seen her like she's not fit enough. You know okay. when you see her matches in yeah. 
in uh, Liga F. Like right. uh, you can feel like like the touches and the technical stuff. It, it reminds her because she's the best of the world. But you you can feel like also like uh, we have to remember like in women's uh, when you break your ACL, it's normally yeah. one year. She yeah. came back earlier than that to be in the semi-final of the Champions League. She pushed herself to to be there, and she's pushing herself to be in that finally in Eindhoven. I think we are going to see Alexia, but maybe and probably in the second half or in the end of, of, of the of the match. Like it would be great news if she's starting because that means like she's 100% on. But I, I think uh, Jonathan Giraldez has reached this final without Alexia. I think the others also deserve to be there. Uh, and you have to, to save her because we want to experience Alexia next season. Also. Yeah. It is a tough decision, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It is a tough decision because yeah. you know what she brings to the table, right. two-time Ballon d'Or winner with everything that that means as well. Just the gravitas that she has uh, on the game. But there's the issue of you've been out for 10 months. Yeah. We don't want to re-aggravate that. Unless in the last match of the season, coming another season, imagine yeah. something happens there. I think uh, Giraldez would never forget himself over just putting Alexia started and something happened. Like, it's football, everything can happen. I think the best is like to do step by step in a recovery. Yeah, and you have like the, 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 the trajectory of, of the whole season with with that solid midfield that they've built yeah. as well with Kira Walsh. And also imagine how it can be Guitaro, with, how can be a final. You're, you're drawing or you're winning and suddenly the second half you bring the Ballon d'Or into the field. That also can be like something to, to the change the game. Yeah. For the, but would he do that under circumstances where the scoreline is, is tight, is, is tight or <laughs> tight I don't know, or it's hard. comfortable? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, aerial footage there of the Arc of Triumph. Uh, Irati's friends uh, must be there. Look at Anson Fati. <laughs> Look at Anson Fati. He's having a lovely time there. Footage from uh, our cameraman Paul Puyas uh, on uh, the Barca bus. This is from a little while back. Let's just listen to it. Fantastic footage from our cameraman Paul Cuyas, Ernest Mendez, uh, Dani Prats is there as well, Uri Gonzalez, and uh, many more that I'm probably forgetting uh, on those buses, providing us with that uh, inside footage. Uh, Diego, there's a, there's a question on here that I've seen throughout the season. I keep forgetting to ask you. Alia says, so Diego, I assume you didn't get the Arturo Vidal haircut. I assume there was a bet back when Arturo Vidal <laughs> was playing for Barca that you said if this happens Artur I, I get the Arturo Vidal haircut I've never seen you in an Arturo Vidal haircut 
So I'm, I'm saying it's a safe no. We gotta get this done, don't we? I, I vaguely remember something that was discussed between us. I remember it very vaguely. I can't remember the specifics <laughs> no. of the bet, though. So maybe, Ali, if you can feel us in, I'll try and, and, and find your comment among all the comments that we're receiving. Yes. Uh, but I just did just, just see it. Um, so, yeah, uh, Diego didn't. You didn't get the <laughs> sort of haircut. I did not. I did not. Not yet, anyway. Maybe that's something we can set up for next season. Are and that's sure? assuming that yeah. Arturo, Are you sure? Arturo <laughs> Vidal's hair is still what it what it used to be when he was. I'm not really yeah, sure. That we're here next season as well. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, that's uh, just another topic that we uh, won't uh, <laughs> touch upon. Arde Triomphe there is the final destination of these uh, players approaching. On the two buses that Should be too left the much departed longer. the uh, Spotify camp, no, about yeah. three hours ago now, just after six yeah. in the uh, afternoon. I'm just waiting to see if the Alia comment comes in regarding the Arturo Vidal uh, bet. Well, I'm, I was watching on Twitter right now, like we were saying um, how important this parade might be for all the women team and everything. And uh, Carla, Carla, our colleague, was interviewing Aitana Bonmati and she was like, we are impressed. Like they are shouting our names. We didn't expect this yeah. after the, t the men's team winning the league. And I think that presumes everything. Well, it's, it's really nice, man. And, and every time the women's team playing the Camp Nou and, and seeing, it, seeing it filled, to the rafters and you know the, the the fans so engaged i haven't been you guys have been uh to the games that they come now but what's the the atmosphere from from the tv anyway looks different than from what he, it he looks like it's does. more yeah. carnival I mean, uh, we, more we've festive. had Bruno there all season as well yeah. and he has said there's a noticeable difference right. a palpable difference uh, from last season to this one uh, the fans just feel a lot more engaged and, but yeah. i would say not from last season since Xavi took over. Mm -hmm. Since Xavi mm -hmm. took over. No, but sorry, I meant at the women's game. Oh, the women's yes, game. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, I've been to the ones uh, in the Champions League at the Camp Nou, yeah. And it's a different atmosphere to the men's games. Yeah. I'd say it's a lot more joyous. Yes. More carnival. The, 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 uh, I've always been when the team has, has won as well. But there's a lot less abuse at the opponent right, right. a lot less abuse at the ref it's more a <laughs> festive atmosphere festive. yeah 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 definitely uh, and, and that's nice to experience as well obviously the results um helped the results helped because i went last year with five uh, two against madrid then the volkswagen Wolfsburg. game which yeah. was four nil five ah, i can't remember the result and then five this year million, right? then five. this year against uh, chelsea also. I, went, I went to the Chelsea I, I, game, I which, was one, which was one all. It was a tight game as well, Very but tight. still the atmosphere I, I went to the festive. Bayern one with a uh, Bayern fan, like, yeah. but he never followed um, women's football and he turned around like, <laughs> these girls play well. Yeah. It was like, eh. yeah. <laughs> and he enjoyed it? Yeah, they enjoyed it. Alia says, I think he said if, uh, that if Barca wins uh, a certain game, he'd get the uh, Vidal haircut, but I'm not certain. It was a UCL game. Well, Diego didn't get the... Um, <laughs> the Arturo Vidal hair style. Right, we're seeing like how the buses are reaching their final destination there. There's the women's team bus, uh, the fans waiting for them in the streets as it slowly starts to get dark in uh, Barcelona. We hit 9 p.m. It's getting past this boy's bedtime. Bus needs to hurry. Uh, there's, there's no bedtime on days <laughs> like this. <laughs> There they are, the women's team. After this, you refocus, concentrate on what's to come in a couple of weeks. Alexia, but I think it, it might be perfect also for that to prepare that uh, final, like a little moment of joy, you know, mm. to, to relax and disconnect and then reconnect again. And appreciate what you've achieved yeah. up until that point, right? And appreciate the success you've had, mm. regardless of what happens in the final. Yeah. No, it's a good, definitely, it's a good point. We've seen several jerseys being thrown at the uh, at the buses to try and get them signed. As we see, Kira Wilson, Jennifer Fernandez break into dance there. Um, 
if you had to throw a jersey onto each one of those buses, who would you want to get it signed by? I'm asking the live chat as well. Who, who would you, if you had to pick one player on each bus, one man, one uh, woman, who would you get it signed from? Or who would you want to get it signed from? I would love Pedris. Yeah. And then Alexia for what he, she has meant for everything, you know, like, I think she's the first big women's sport athlete in Spain that to, to achieve and break all those barriers. So her and then Rofo, I have one Swedish shirt ready to get the sign of Rofo one day. Okay. So I would Good. choose two in the women's team. Yeah, from, from the women's it's clear it's Alexia, it has to be Alexia. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. other great, you know, personajes, great characters in, in that women's team, but just for everything that she stands for and symbolizes, Alexia Putellas for sure. For the men's, I would go... I'd go Busquets because it's his last one. It's his yep. last uh, Rua, it's his last dance, his last drive around uh, town on, on a bus celebrating a title. And I would hope, be hopeful that maybe in years to come I would have other chances to throw another shirt <laughs> on that bus maybe. But uh, yeah, probably Busquets. It's, probably, it's an end of an era. There he is there, the, the captain. There and uh, Sorry, Robert, you were saying that we don't speculate, but throwing a cheeky question out there if I may who do you think is going to be his replacement from what we have in the team from well what we have in the team? I mean there's a clear option that yeah. Frankie de Jong mm -hmm. Frankie de Jong is a clear option he's, he's played in that position as well we've got Nico returning from that's, uh, that's, from loan I was going to we'll see how, how that goes yeah Xavi has obviously tried out Eddie Garcia this season yes, as well so exactly what with, with what we've got within you might even see Kessier mm -hmm. uh what, with what we've got within there are definitely options then we'll see if it's a busy summer if it's not a busy summer yeah have to, have to wait and see but i i be rest assured that at least we have options within yeah i think there's options I I inside the team and i think the first one is frankie de jong frankie, i mean yeah. he came to play in that position yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't he like he, he was the big replacement of uh, sergio busquets at yeah. the point and uh, he has found uh, like uh, another position, and I would say it's a bit like uh, Busquets lives now because it felt like Busquets and and Frankie got like a special connection there, and and uh, when they were playing together, they were like having this special connection. They were playing better uh, between each other, but I think we'll see. I think Xavi has already options inside the squad. We were asking the fans if they had to throw a jersey onto one of those two buses, uh, which one would, by which player would they want to get it signed? Christian Tendejas says Aitana, Ayan says Gavi, Leticia says Putellas and Pedri, Euphoria says uh, Lucy Bronze, Jade says De Jong, Sumit says Pedri, Willy Lopez, Gavi, uh, Python says Mariona and Eric. Interesting choices. Mm. Uh, Chushara Lakshan says Araujo, uh, Gada Jet says Aitana Goat Mati. Yes. Uh, yes. Red says Alexia Pedri. Sigla's nice. uh, Gaming, De Jong and Bombati. The Moon, Lewandowski. I would go Aitana. Probably my favorite player on that team. And I, th I think it has to be Pedri. It's just, I enjoy watching him play so much. Yeah. Yeah, I think Pedri is, He's my new is, guy. is He's the my one, new guy. Yeah. I, I, there's others the, like Araujo Gabi. Like Araujo you, Gabi. You could, and yeah. Esther Stegen as well. But yeah. I, I yes. don't think I'd ever buy a keeper's jersey. That's, that's yeah, the problem. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing. And then from the youngsters. Do we count Gabi as a youngster? Yeah. Absolutely. Or Balde? Balde, yeah. Balde so is, is, be, is sneakily a fan favorite as well. The, the Barca I, number 10. That weighs heavy to uh, Ansu. Would love to get Ansu's. Signature. Gabriel ah. Martinez says uh, Mark Andre to stay in Aitana. Yerita Reola says uh, Girl Mappy Boy Pedri. Uh, Giova says Gianna and Araujo. Becar Ludi, like you, Diego, Busquets and Alexia. Chris Sprinkle says Chavi and Alexia. Chavi is a good option as well. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and and Alex Putellas and for sure Lewandowski. Sashank Sekar Araujo Aitana. Just lots of uh, nice picks here. We've got a Kira Walsh one as well from Maureen. Uh, we've got Mappy picks as well. Mappy's a very popular pair as yeah. well amongst the, uh, the, the young I think that couple, uh, Mappy and Engen, uh, they, they do, they, they sell a lot. And I think between the youngsters, I think Gabi must have to be a Gabi, we know. I mean, every time we're on live, <laughs> there's 
madness on the live chat uh, yeah. with, with, with Gavi. Lots of love for Gavi. I remember this year we, we've been promoting these uh, the playlists on Spotify. We've got the Match Day playlist. <laughs> Everyone was begging for a Gavi's one. one. And uh, we keep getting so many requests. It's like, when is Gavi's playlist coming out? When is Gavi's playlist? Well, it hasn't come out yet. I'm sure it will mm -hmm. come out soon. And then from the women's team, mm. I would choose Vicky Lopez. Like I have devotion for that Vicky. player. Like I, I've seen mm. her playing and winning the the world champions with Spain in, in under 17, mm. and she's so talented. Like we talk about Lamin Yamal, but that girl is 16 years old. Yeah. She 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 came with the first team. She scored. She's, she's been scored participating with, with with the champ in Champions League, yeah. and uh, I think like she's a project of a Ballon d'Or there. So we have she a there. She was on your radar before signing for Barca, I imagine. Yeah, she was playing in Madrid Club de Fútbol Femenino yeah. and uh, she made the debut in the professional with 15 years old or something like that. And uh, then I, I saw her winning the, the, the World Cup mm -hmm. with the, the national team under 17. And you can tell like, she has something different. And, uh, and she is the perfect fit for Barca. She's the kind of uh, Barca player. Mm. Monstro Art says, thank you for this stream. Well, we're happy to serve uh, here celebrating these two league titles for the men's and the women's team. Obviously, the men's the most recent one winning it yesterday in the derby against Espanol. A fantastic per first half in which the team got it done. Two goals by Lewandowski, one by Alejandro Valde. Then Kunde added himself, added his name to the scoring party as well. Just seeing the joy of Sergio Alegre, who always looks so serious <laughs> as well, one of Xavi's assistants, and him enjoying the, uh, this moment as well. is obviously uh, great as the teams approach the end of their route here in this bus parade through the streets of Barcelona. Once they reach the Arc of Triumph, the parade will be over. But we'll still have many chances to savor <laughs> this uh, fantastic moment, this title, this league title. We've got the Bengalas going there. Nice. All the smoke and just floods of people, thousands and thousands of people out with their, with their shirts on, their flags, their scarves, their Barca memorabilia. An amazing atmosphere in Barcelona to receive their champions. And it's just amazing how uh, this team of 11 players that Xavi puts out there and uh, all, all of the rest who then sometimes come on. It's, well, the squad of 25 and obviously uh, the 25 for Jonathan Giraldi. How much those 50 people can make a difference emotionally in people's life? How, I mean, how uplifted you feel this morning when, when you wake up? Because it's just it's true. I it's think something yeah, positive. Different. Yeah. I saw the example. I went to the gym this morning, and <laughs> like out of 20 persons that were there, probably 15 were wearing Barca shirts, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And people were smiling in the gym, probably like they didn't want to be there, but they were there training with a Barca shirt. It's true. It's true. The impact on it for entire cultures and people uh, is 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 massive for sure, and around the world, of course. Like I said, I mean, we saw images of uh, the Barça Peña of Mumbai. We get another shout out to Anand. Uh, but yeah, I mean, people all over the world celebrating this this title and, and you know, deep into the the night hours. And it's difficult. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm sure different this, this parade zones. is going to end now, but uh, yeah. some of these people are are not going home no, after this. No, 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 exactly. I wouldn't if I was there. No, yeah. no definitely Maybe go not. Maybe have dinner. Yeah. Have some have a, have a drink. It is Monday. It is Monday, <laughs> it is, but... Uh, <laughs> All the more reason. There's, there's work tomorrow to be done. But anyway... And people on rooftops there, you see? As the buses have approached uh, Art de Triomphe, almost finalizing this route around the city. Now, is that is that a stage prepared? Yeah, but we have seen those like all over the parade, so oh, maybe right. it's only for the cameras. Ah, that's what it is, right? Yeah, I'm sure the people will now understand that uh, the tour has come to an end, and they will simply turn around and yeah. <laughs> go to their houses. 
No, I'm interested to see what happens next. Ah, there we go. Well, Look at that. Good. Yeah, these people are not going anywhere. <laughs> I think they just stay there another <laughs> night. <laughs> Look at the atmosphere in the city of uh, Barcelona as the uh, players reach almost the end of this uh, route. Those two buses carrying the men's team and the women's team, the league champions. This parade, which has been ongoing now for just over three hours, it departed from the Spotify Cup now, gone six o'clock in the afternoon. It is now just past 9 p.m. Is and more here they are, still <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> Look, Mappy Leon, we haven't seen a lot of her. She is. It's true, you would have expected mm -hmm. her much more to be in uh, the forefront of the celebrations. Eh? The buses have gone past the art of triumph. <laughs> it's still going strong. And they're still going. <laughs> really difficult to stop this right now. <laughs> well, now this there are no speeding more fans up. here, so I'm, I'm assuming now that the, the, uh, the buses going faster, are going yeah. to a safe zone where uh, the players are going to be transported back to the Ciudad Sportiva, I imagine. And yeah. uh, mm. then There's either the go home or, or, yeah. or continue continue their celebrations. I mean, why wouldn't you if, uh, if you just become the league champion? Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe the women's team should just rest and focus on tomorrow's workout. Uh, but yeah, why not continue or have another dinner after this? As the buses turn the corner there. This uh, celebration, this parade is about to come to an end. A fantastic celebration for the fans out in the streets of uh, Barcelona. And I hope Bruno is okay. I hope Bruno is okay. <laughs> we, uh, we haven't heard from him in the last uh, half hour. Uh, I assume he's uh, he's a fit boy. <laughs> <laughs> he plays tennis all the time. <laughs> Let's see if we uh, get to hear from Bruno before we uh, finish this uh, live stream, before we finish this show. There will be more celebrations, of course, as we said uh, earlier on. Um, Hopefully, women's team can win that Champions League title, and there'll be we more celebrations so. either at the Camp Nou or the spot or the um, Johan Cruyff. S uh, Saturday after the game against Real Sociedad, there'll be a little bit of a celebration as well with the fans who who were there. The, the um, men's team offering them the title. We'll see if there are a few speeches as well. Those are always uh, great moments. Maybe some fireworks, fireworks as well. Yeah. Makes it very visible. Now, clearly. This uh, parade has come to, to an end yeah. and the bus is leaving to either go back to Ciudad Esportiva or the players will be put into other vehicles to go back to that uh, Ciudad Esportiva. Guys, this has been uh, amazing. We won the league yesterday. The club got this parade set up, both teams, and uh, it's been fantastic to, to reflect on this up and down season, but ultimately a success of a season because, as Xavi said, we need to win titles this season to earn the credibility and titles we have won. That's it, that's yeah. it. The first big objective is uh, in the bag for Xavi. He wanted to reconquer the league title. That we can now give it a big fat check mark and uh, yeah, hopefully more things to come. Yeah, I, it was an amazing way to start the week, wasn't it? Yeah. Like we ended with that uh, celebration yesterday, with this big celebration seeing Barcelona like that. It's amazing, and uh, as uh, Diego said, we hope we can bring a new Champions League home. And that is it from us here at uh, Barca Studios. Uh, oh, wait a minute! It's not it. Let's go to Bruno. Bruno, oh, he's alive. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, your, your, your closing <laughs> argument in this parade. <laughs> Yes, uh, we have arrived. It has been crazy that the final meters there in, in Arde Triomphe, all the people, also some moments of tension between fans and police officers because, of course, many safety reasons. But, well, in the end, everything has, has ended well. Uh, the players now, yeah, um, they've changed the bus and they are back to Ciudad Esportiva. 
has been a massive party, I think, for uh, men's, for the women's. Uh, they deserve, I think, this celebration. Uh, the crowd on the streets has been also amazing, and I think also they, they were waiting for this moment and they deserve it. So everything has went really well. Uh, three hours, 15 minutes uh, in total. So uh, also in the timings, uh, everything on time. Uh, and well, now the journalists around here also ending the, um, all this uh, day, this afternoon, uh, the police and everyone uh, in this final point, uh, the city center of Barcelona has been a pleasure also from, from all of us. Uh, also credit to all our cameramen. It's really tough to work in these conditions, but they have been all of them superb. And this has been everything from, from here, huge celebration. Let's uh, hope that in 23-24 season we can continue celebrating many, many trophies. Thank you very much, Bruno. And uh, as uh, he said, indeed, credit to all of our camera operators, all of our social yes. media team, uh, Marbrao, Bruno, Carla as well, uh, providing us the information, the inside information from them, all of the uh, team who's been here, plus everyone behind the cameras here as well in this Double league celebration for the men's and the women's team. A successful season which hasn't ended yet. There's more to come. We'll be coming back to you live on Saturday for Barça Real Sociedad. It's not a meaningless game. Obviously now not a title at stake. We've already won it, but we still want to continue winning. We want to continue celebrating. There'll be a bit of a celebration at the Spotify Cup now on uh, Saturday. So be sure to tune in with us. We're going to leave you with some of the best footage of this uh, parade celebration in the city of Barcelona that we've uh, been through this afternoon here on uh, Barcelona. Thank you for watching and we'll see you at the weekend.